<laughs> did not see that coming. <laughs> Why didn't we? You should have known. You I mean, have. It's, the, it's the likely intro right there. Although I feel bad that people can't see us and see that I was actually doing the staff banging as I was doing that. Yeah, so. and that you're wearing a beard. That's amazing. Well, <laughs> he grew one just for the show. I like to look the part. Welcome to Bake Sale, everyone. I'm Joel. I'm Kent. And Jacob. And uh, we got someone else here in the room with us, fellas. What? Brandon, you want to say hi? Hello, my name is Brandon Mole. I write books about fairies. <laughs> That's the intro. Uh, no, we are very excited to have Brandon here on the show. Uh, Brandon Mole, uh, New York Times bestseller, uh, author of such uh, series as Fable Haven, The Five Kingdoms. He also wrote Candy Shop Wars and Pingo. And what else have you done, Brandon? Beyonders. I did Spirit the Animals. Spirit Animals series for Scholastic. Beyonders. How did I forget Beyonders? It. I'm sorry. I forgot that. I love that series. Thank you. Yeah. You're not very old. <laughs> How have you written so many books? Just, I'm so nerdy about it. I just love you it. You just get right into it's it? It's my favorite thing. How many books a year do you write? No, about two. About wow. two. Wow. That's Ugh. been about, Ask about Ken 10 Ken how many years. he's written in a year. Uh, how many? <laughs> flip books? Yeah, we did flip one books. One this week. That yeah. works. Yeah. He's actually the one who helped me. He drew the pictures for Goodnight Sleepy Zombie, so. Oh, yeah. sweet. Oh, yeah. sweet. Collaboration. Yeah. Oh, very cool. Yeah, but no. Uh, hey, having, we're not here to plug us. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> I can plug my unpublished available <laughs> on Amazon. <laughs> but watch for Good Night Sleepy Zombie. Yes. <laughs> Coming soon. No, but Brandon's here uh, as, a, as a personal favor to me. He's a friend of mine. We've known each other for oh, 12 years. years yeah. Since college. Yeah. And so we, we knew each other back in Divine Comedy. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's where we met at BYU. Brandon was uh, kind of the king of Divine Comedy at the time and did a lot of the writing for him. He wrote such uh, wonderful uh, parodies as Lord of the Engagement Rings, which Perfect. was a lot of fun. And also Pirates of the Cougar Eat, uh, CTR Wars. And you can actually find a lot of these on YouTube. I've uploaded them to YouTube so you can find those. But there's all these fun BYU parodies. of. Oh, I'm things. glad you did. That's yeah. good. Yeah, they're out there digital, digitized. Yeah, so we got Brandon here. And uh, Brandon, why don't you tell us a little about yourself and, and plug anything you want. Yeah, what's new right now? Okay, so what's new is I do have, like, for the first time I did an interactive book. You know, usually I write novels, and this is like an interactive activity book. It's called the the Fable Haven Book of Imagination. It just came out recently, you know, like for this holiday season, and it is like, imagine you were the caretaker of a secret wildlife park for magical creatures, which is what my Fable Haven series is about. Yep. And imagine you're a caretaker and what would your flag look like and what would your money look like? And it's the kind of thing where a kid gets their pen out and there's stuff to color and there's crafts to do and there's questions to answer and things like find a really cool place to hide this book. Mm -hmm. Right. Like all like, and so it tries to make it really interactive and I think it's cool and fun and a stocking stuffer kind of book. Um, and then also I have a sequel series coming to Fable Haven, right. which will be next year. That will come out in March. It will be called Dragon Watch. Dragon Watch. Yeah. And Dragon Watch will be a, a, a true sequel series, meaning like we'll pick up where the previous series left off. Like same main characters. We're not jumping way into the future. It's just a few months after the events of book five. And in some ways it'll read like six, seven, eight, nine, ten. But I give enough information that it also could be an entry point to the series for new readers. Yeah. Cool. Old, older readers as well, I'm assuming. My my stuff works very well for the Harry Potter crowd. So the same Perfect. kind of teens and adults that would like a Harry Potter type book, I get a lot of those guys in my signing lines. That's pretty much us. Yeah, that's, that's pretty yeah. much yeah. us. Yeah, and it's, and it's me too, which is okay. why I write this stuff. No, I, I love it. You know, I just want to tell a quick story too. Um, so uh, Brandon, the first time I kind of found out he wrote books is he said, hey, I'm doing this launch party for one of my books. Could you guys come and perform at it and do you know a comedy show and stuff like that? And we're like, yeah, sure. Brandon's a friend. We'll be happy to do that. And I remember thinking, oh, it's so good of Brandon that he wrote a book. I'm so proud of him. I wonder if people will show up. That'll be fun. And I got there, and it was at Cottonwood High School, and the auditorium was chuck full, like absolutely full, up in the balcony. And I remember walking when Brandon walked out, and they were screaming for him, and I thought, oh, my gosh, I'm friends with a celebrity. <laughs> And all of a sudden, I didn't know how to act around him. Like I, I like. Oh, I was, that's funny. Like we were just backstage. I'm like, hey, Brandon. And then afterwards, I remember I was like, oh, Brandon's a celebrity. This is weird. Is that why you were taking those drugs before we came in? Yes, <laughs> I still get very nervous when I'm around. Sedatives. They're don't sedatives. call them drugs. Call them oh, sedatives. Well, and then, Sorry. Yeah. And then I hadn't read any of your books up to that point when we did the lunch party. I didn't know anything about him. Yeah, and that's fine. I, yeah, good friend. Really yeah. good friend. Yeah, I know. But then I started to read them and. I genuinely love the books. Like, honestly, Candy Shop Wars is one of my favorite books of all time. Oh, thank you. I really enjoy it. And I, I've, you know, I've read the entire Fable Haven and Beyonder series. I'm still plugging away through Five Kingdoms. So that's all my main stuff. That's the stuff I would recommend to a friend. So yeah, and my kids love them. In fact, I brought some books uh, my daughter wants you to sign tonight. So don't let me forget that. <laughs> so you're stuck. Yeah. No, Thanks for coming great. on the podcast. No, I'm so yeah, you're signing stuff. <laughs> yeah. And, so and you know what? It is not a prerequisite to be a friend of mine to read my books. And, <laughs> and so that, that is so kind that you have read some of them and yeah. liked them. That means a lot. But the thing is, I just wanted to, I wanted to point out that it's not just because I'm a friend of his because I hadn't read them before, but they're really good books. If you haven't read any of them, I highly recommend them. And I recommend your kids read them too, because they're fun for adults and for kids. Yeah. Kind of 10 and 
up sort of books. Exactly. That's, Although, that's the yeah, ballpark. My, my nine-year-old is bird through almost all of them, so she yeah, loves if, them. If you're smart and younger than 10, you can do it. There you go. Hear that, Kaylee? And you know who smart. that kid you're is. smart. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, so any other things you want to talk about, Brandon, about yourself? Or? That's pretty good. Okay. I, I think let's jump into it. All, all right. right. Well, well, let's start with the questions then. Yes, because as you know, on Bacon Cell, every time we have a guest, we ask them a series of questions. These questions are very important and will tell us <laughs> who's going to like you more. <laughs> so now Joel or Kent will cheer for you depending on your answer. Oh, right. Time. Yes, right. right. Just, you've always so. differed on these, huh? Yes. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Okay. That's, what, that's how a versus shows usually start. All right. We'll see. All right. Here we go. Karate Kid 1 versus Karate Kid 2, which is best. Oh, Karate Kid 1. Boo. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. It's oh, you guys be. went to college together. Yeah. But the, but the, the Not, ice part was cool in Karate Kid 2. It yeah, was. It was yeah, cool. Kept, and the drum was pretty cool. But, yeah. Yeah. I but, think you, you change your mind. No, there, there's some cool stuff in there, but like Karate Kid 1, put him in a body bag. Yeah. It's Come got on. the lines. That's what I'm telling you. It's got so many cool. No, no. Yeah. Two has a way Strike deep. first. Strike hard. No mercy, sir. One has the lines. Two has the story. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, okay. So that's the first question. Second question. There's an argument to be made there. I like it. Which is worse? Phantom Menace or Attack of the Clones? Which oh, is the worst? Oh, uh, mm. <laughs> uh, okay, probably. I, I guess for me, Phantom Menace. Yes, uh, yes. I guess for me, Phantom, one and one. <laughs> but like Phantom Menace ends so strong. It, it like it almost saved it because it ended so strong. Yes. Wait, which part? With the Darth Maul fight. The, the, the Darth Maul fight. Oh, okay, uh, that part ended so strong. He that, means yeah. when Jar Jar Binks starts accidentally winning. That's so <laughs> strong. No, no, like like that, like that scene. Like like seeing him cut in half, falling down the hole. That's pretty Duel good. Duel of the Fates. Oh, yeah. so good. All yeah, right. yeah. The music. All know. right, so we're one and one here. Okay, which is the most most American movie, Rocky IV or Independence Day? Ooh, oh, wow. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I love that's that these are. I got to do Rocky IV. Yeah. Do Rocky oh. IV. Oh. Here's the thing. Can you give us your quote before we started the show? Because we were like, we talk about pretty trivial things like movies or TV or whatever. And you talked about, you know, approaching books or. Kurt Vonnegut had a pretty good quote and paraphrasing it. It was that, you know, taking. You know, getting passionately argumentative about a novel or whatever, right? Getting getting angry about a novel is the equivalent of putting on a full sur- suit of armor to attack a hot fudge Sunday. <laughs> but <laughs> that's right. pretty much it. Seems like you're racking your brain over Star Wars or Star Wars one and two. You oh, know? I'm nerdy. Right, I, I right. wear it on my sleeve, and it yeah. hurts. It hurts when you have to make a decision like that. Okay, here we go. Nightmare Before Christmas. Is that a Halloween movie or a Christmas movie? Uh, uh, is there uh, such random questions? No, yeah. that's a good question though. Okay, Nightmare Before Christmas is a. It, it, in my heart, it's a Halloween movie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is Hold on. three Don't versus one? This is not going to I was actually really one. worried that you were going to say, but in my brain, it's a Christmas movie. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, this. what's this? What's this? That's this totally Christmas. Yeah. yeah. All right. Like, and then finally, uh, Buffy or X-Files? Mm, Buffy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're best friends. Oh, who wants to college oh. with who now? <laughs> Show's over. <laughs> Show's I, I, over. I wrote a skit on X-Files, and I love X-Files. Yeah. That's but, good. But the, but the continuity in Buffy yeah. was genius. You're right. Yeah. So there you go. And we're both geniuses. For so apparently so. You're, you're Kent's best friend, and I'm going to yeah. sit over here in the corner. Hey, remember now. when we did and, Divine and, Comedy together? And for full together? disclosure, I had a friend in Buffy the Vampire Slayer. So that's like what? even, like, I, I'm biased. Who's your friend? Like a guest. Like, he was like a, he was a guy named Larry, who was a werewolf, and he was in it for like, in season three for like five or six episodes. So really? he wasn't like on it all was the time. Was he trying to tempt Oz to uh, join him? The bad like, gang. Everyone thought he was gay, and then he turned out to be a werewolf. There was like a scene in a locker room. <laughs> That's I, always the case. I hated high school. Yeah. <laughs> it was weird. Yeah. Anyway, but, so yeah. Oh, there you go. All right. So now we get to know our guests a little more, and now it's what time. Was, what was that score, Joel? I feel really confident what was with what this. Was it was like one to four. <laughs> I am so sorry. <laughs> no, it's okay. That's the thing. We've had guests go back and forth. So oh, that's Ken can have a guest every now that and then. That's great. fine. That's yeah. great. But what, Jacob, what are we talking about today right, in our so Versus show? Today we have the biggest topic maybe we have ever covered. This is a big topic. I mean, this is huge. This is just gigantic. This so big we needed Brandon Moll to be here. Yes. That's exactly right. We needed to bring in we, a New York Times bestselling author yeah. to settle this. We could not cover this ourselves. And no. that's just a fact. This is Star Wars versus Lord of the Rings. Which is the better franchise? Yeah, and we're talking about the it franchise could cause well. a black hole. Just this just, could just opening this conversation. Well, and when, and when we were talking to Brandon about the when I was we were trying to come up with topics to talk to Brandon about, I knew from experience from Lord of the Engagement Rings and from CTR Wars that you loved and had a passion and a knowledge about both of these movies. Yes. And, and in the launch parties, you've made references to The Hobbit and things like that. And you've uh, so nerdy about both of them. Yeah. Th- this we, whole conversation is going to tear me apart. We had a feeling. <laughs> Yes. And that's why you're here today. And so, and we're not doing a traditional versus show, right, no. Jacob? No, this is going to be a little bit unique. In fact, we've never done anything quite like this, and I'm kind of excited to see how it goes. Yeah. So it since, could completely flop. <laughs> <laughs> well, since we've got Brandon as well as Joel and Kent, we've got three. Now, this makes for an easy tiebreaker. Uh, it's going to be one versus two. 
uh, probably most of the time. Who knows? We'll see how it goes. Or, or maybe it's three. Who knows? Yeah. Who knows? But what we have is a list of different categories that we're going to go over, and there's going to be a fight over which franchise wins each category. Like, for instance, I'm just going to go ahead and tell you guys the first one you guys can be thinking. But the first category is accessibility to non-fans, right? And so then Kins will say it's, you know, whatever, Lord of the Rings. And, and then Joel will take the opposite. And then if there's a tie, maybe Brandon will break it. And we're just going to see how it goes. I'm going to keep track. Just cold hard facts. We're going to find out which one. The cold hard facts of our objective win. opinions. <laughs> yes, that's exactly right. <laughs> but we're going to declare a winner at the yeah, end. Yeah, that's right. Of Lord got, of the Rings. I've got or a tally Star Wars. thing right here, and I'm just like X, X, X down Star Wars and Lord of the Rings, and I'm going to count them up at the end, and we're going to see which one. Bacon Cell thinks it's No, I do want so to clarify nervous. something else. Too, I know, right? Because I know we've already established Brandon is passionate for both these movies. Kent, yes. or you are as well. This is Sophie's choice. Yes. And then for me as well. Like, these are really, really good movies, and we like most all of them. I do have a bias towards one of the trilogies. As do I. The, the prequels, right? It, yes. I'm just talking about the prequels. Just yes. the prequels. <laughs> and we did, to make it a little more fair, we did include uh, The Hobbit and the Lord of the Rings franchise. I kind of didn't you kind of have to that's your fault but uh okay. yeah. well, if you're going to include the star wars prequels you, yes it's, it's, probably so it's, fair like, it's basically seven movies because i'm movies. kind of going trilogy based and then there are some spin-offs of these questions but we'll go, we'll get there we'll get there we'll okay. Okay. okay so the first the first round so in your heart this is kind of the trilogy the yes. original trilogy. Yes. for me this is trilogy the best trilogy versus the best trilogy not including the greatest trilogy which is the dark knight anyways let's continue okay <laughs> how does that come into this at all all right so he's had to, had to plug it he loves it he did. <laughs> that's exactly what it was yeah all right Kent, let's start with you accessibility to non-fans who get your vote has to go to star wars on this one star wars yeah it's star wars people like lasers you know in 1970 people like lasers <laughs> in 1977 when this one came out this was not the first of its kind but the, the best of its kind when it came out it was so much fun blockbusters were relatively new and i think star wars really opened that up whereas fantasy people look down on it until they explore it mm-hmm. and so i think for, for just new fans it's star wars all the way all right my turn all right joel accessibility to non-fans, I'm going to have to give it to Star Wars as well. There's no bu- no books or backstory required. You can jump right into the first one and be caught up in the universe. Granted, it is episode four, so people will be like, what? But at the same time, Lord of the Rings, I think, like Ken said, it's going to take a little more... Uh, people are going to have to kind of be more open to even go see it in the first place. Right. Brandon? Okay. So I'm going to argue with you. I'm going to say Lord of the Rings. And I'm going to say Lord of the Rings because I talked to lots of people who... Like especially women who say Star Wars, I didn't get it. Star Wars, I didn't get it. That's true. I didn't like it. I didn't get it. Yeah. And 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 I think part of it is to to a new fan right now today in 2016. I'm not. I think there's something about Star Wars that it's a little too far in the past. It's a little too doesn't look like what they want it to look like now. And I think Lord of the Rings is a little more what a modern movie looks like to people. And for a new person, maybe a little more accessible. That's a strong argument. I, I talked to a guy like that's uh, 23. Is just a neighbor. And I talked to him. He's like, I just watched Star Wars for the first time six months ago. And four, five, and six are so boring. What? And I got mad. <laughs> I actually got really mad. I said, Wait, are you saying one, two, and three better? He's like, Yeah, far better. <gasps> <laughs> I died inside a little bit. But I think no. you're right. I think that's that's a good point. And in fact, the prequels couldn't really make as much money as they wanted to because the female audience was not there. They've mm-hmm. never really been there, maybe till The Force Awakens. It's weird they came back for that, though. Yeah. And they did. Well, for The Force Awakens, yeah. there was so much hype there, and having a female lead in the movie true, definitely helps. Yeah. But... It looks like the round's going to go to Star Wars. Yeah, yep. good argument. Though. Yeah, it's okay. But right, can so we change? At least you know, change it to center. No, we can change. If, you know, like I say, if we, if, if Brandon is right, <laughs> for example, <laughs> or we want to kiss up I'm just a little gonna, bit, I'm just going to overrule. Like, oh, sorry guys, I'm going with Brandon yeah. on this one. But, he gets but, yeah. two votes. <laughs> I think Star Wars wins this one. Uh, Star Wars is going to win this. Round. And Jacob is going to keep track of each one of these yep, wins. Keep so track. You can keep track at home and play along at home as well. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Next category is acting. Which franchise had the best acting? Joel, let's start with you. Okay. I'm going to have to say Lord of the Rings. Because honestly, the acting in Star Wars, some of it is so cringeworthy. I mean, think of Natalie Portman delivering that line of, oh. I die a little every day. A little, I died a little bit every day since the day I met you or something like that. I truly, deeply I, love you. <laughs> oh, and actually. Because I said truly and deeply. Ugh. That means it. <laughs> <laughs> no, but then just even I did too. There. So when we were shooting CTR Wars, I got to play the part of this Anakin kind of parody. And, and Brandon wanted me to talk to Padme and things like that. And the direction I got was more wooden. (laughs) And so I had to kind of like talk like a robot basically. And also I just want to point this out too. And this is a little more cold, hard facty stuff. 
many of the actors in Lord of the Rings were recognized for their individual work, not just Academy Awards, but kind of just a bunch of different nominations. Like BAFTAs. Sir Ian McKellen, 12 nominations. Andy Serkis, 10 nominations. Sean Astin, 9 nominations. And Viggo Mortensen, 5 nominations. Star Wars got one nomination for Best Supporting Actor. For who? Opie won. Really? It, it was? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Alec Guinness. Is hey, one. See, in the Star Wars, can, it, before Ewan McGregor, there was Alec Guinness. Wait, who? <laughs> you jerk. <laughs> I'm going off the original trilogy anyways. I don't know. Like, Lord of the Rings has good acting, but it doesn't have... But I was going to Toshi Station and pick up some power converters. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Like, that's as bad as you can get. It's and Luke, Luke Hamill... Great lead. Luke Hamill. I like how you call Luke Hamill. Mark Hamill. Hamill. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, who's he's, Luke Hamill? He's great as Luke Skywalker. Carrie Leia. And, and he did grow over the trilogy. Like, by the Return of the Jedi, he's a little bit better, but that's not that much better. Harrison Ford is great, but he's still Harrison Ford type. It's Han Solo type. He invented a type. We're not giving Brandon a chance to do tiebreakers here, is what you're saying. <laughs> yeah, it's Lord of the Rings all the way. Brandon. Yeah, you're both on Lord of the Rings. And uh, though... I love Han Solo. You yeah. got to love Han Solo. He's so great. Yeah. And he, he almost tips it. But Lord of the Rings just had too many good, solid, well-acted characters. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, sorry. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. Andy, Andy Circus alone. Great. Oh, yeah. Gollum, Gollum has been parodied so much that it's kind of lost its luster. But it's this really kind of interesting kind of malicious, yet you kind of sympathize with this character. When if something gets parodied that much, there's a reason. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, like yeah. you, you made a dent on everybody's psyche. Right. Yeah. You know? yeah, exactly. I, I actually have the Trump card here. I guess Trump is not the right word to say anymore. <laughs> but uh, Orlando Bloom and Elijah Wood tied for the best Teen Choice Award for 2004 for best acting. Really? Oh, wow. So, yeah. Well, and it's because they're both equally good looking. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's what it is. Maybe slight edge to yeah. Orlando. They could Who knows? totally yeah. make, like, a, if either of those movies was going to make a boy band, for sure, yeah. Lord of the Rings. <laughs> so speaking of that very point, our next category. So that round went, that round went to Lord of the Rings. That round went to, Lord of, went to Rings. Lord of the Rings. And the next one, which uh, is a category that uh, Joel just insisted on having. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why, but is the attractiveness of the cast. And Brandon, feel free to jump in yeah, at any let's, point let's here. Let's, go start, first. With, let's, let's start, start with Brandon this time. Yeah. yeah. Attractiveness of the cast. Yep. Yes. Yep. Okay. So <laughs> We're I can't believe here. this is a category. <laughs> my, 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 daughter, my, da- my daughter would kill me if I didn't say Lord of the Rings because of Legolas. Because Legolas won a million hearts, I think, of, of preteen women. And, and then you've and got... old moms. Yeah. 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 And, 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 and then for me, when, when I go to me, I mean, come on, Leia's cute. She's cute. And, and she, she made a dent in everybody's psyche in Return of the Jedi. Something, yeah. that, something that lingers. Something. Uh, something. Something about it. Just something. It's something, golden memory in your sort. heart. <laughs> something about the Return of the Jedi just lingers. And, <laughs> and every young boy's heart. Every young boy's. Yeah, yeah. He's always like, hmm, wait a minute. I hear people are starting to dress that way at Comic-Con now. I, it, I mean, it's, just, it, it's a brand new thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. Brand new. But like, yeah, I don't know. But there's, there's some pretty beautiful, like there's more of like kind of a, an otherworldly beautiful woman that they, they, they use in Lord of the Rings with Galadriel and mm-hmm. with, you know, some of that stuff. So yeah, I'll, I'll lean toward Lord of the Rings, though you, there's arguments to be made. All right. Vico Mortensen's butt chin. I mean, that thing right there. I thought is you were phenomenal. just going to stop with butt. There for a second. <laughs> I'm like, I wonder, I mean, what, no, that's a different movie. That's Eastern <laughs> Promises. Um, <laughs> but I would say it's like Vigo Mortensen versus, versus Harrison Ford in his prime, right? Mm-hmm. Orlando Bloom versus Carrie Fisher in Return of the Jedi. In their prime. Mm. And I, oh, wow. That's tough. Okay, look, I think Zercher's made a killing off of the legless cardboard cutouts yeah. for teen girls and college girls everywhere. Oh, yes. But I have to give this one to Star Wars, simply for Carrie Fisher in that movie. I can live with that. <sighs> so it's up to me. It's mm-hmm. up to you. Because on one, hand, on one hand, you have Carrie Fisher and Natalie Portman. Yeah, on true. the other hand, you have Liv Tyler, Clay, Kate Blanchett, and Orlando Bloom. <laughs> like the one of them's Orlando Bloom. <laughs> yeah, it just you can't he's get away. So from pretty. Him. He's very he is, pretty. He's pretty in there, and he sits um, downstairs. Although in the Hobbit, he didn't look as pretty. I don't know what it was. He's just an older elf or something like that. He's, he's actually younger. Elf. He's supposed to be younger. Mm. Yeah, might have been a little bit of uncanny valley to his pretty. Oh yeah, there's something yeah. weird there. But honest, I, yeah, something about the elves like Kate Blanchett and even uh, Miranda Otto, um, a- Eowyn. Yeah, she's oh, like that's true. She's, she's like the girl cute. next door. Yeah. yeah. I got to yeah. go with Lord of the Rings. Wow. That surprises me. I got to go with Lord of the Rings. Look, yeah. I go to Lord if, of the Rings, too. I mean, that's a good choice. If Joel. this category was the decider of the the winner of Star Wars and Lord of the Rings, then we're in trouble. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're stressed out. <laughs> yeah, right. You're stressed out. Well, they, there is Han Solo. That's a tough one, too. Yeah. But yeah. anyways. All right. All right. Now, this one's less of a voting. It's just... Uh, we'll cold just, Hard Facts. This is Cold Hard Facts. Mm. Is what awards were earned by each movie? Who wins? Um, so did you take a record of this, Joel? I did. And the one thing I just want to point out, just to kind of off the top, it's amazing to me, and I didn't know this, but going into it, looking, and I, I went with Academy Awards only. Me I, too. Didn't, I didn't count MTV 
for some reason. But um, <laughs> that's mysterious. I don't know why. It was interesting to me to see how Lord of the Rings got more award nominations as they went on, and the uh, Star Wars got less as they went on. Like, just interesting. Like, for example, and I'm going to give some numbers here, but try and stay with me. Lord of the Rings in the Academy Awards Fellowship got four awards out of 13 nominations. So that's pretty good. And then Two Towers only got six nominations, but it won two awards. So the percentage-wise, that's better. Mm-hmm. And then Return of the King, 11 awards, 11 nominations. Wow. One Which of including yikes. Best Picture. Yeah, including Best Picture. Wow, yeah. 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 And then uh, you get into Star Wars, and it's like New Hope got 11 nominations and won seven. And then it's just downhill from there. Empire got four nominations, only won two. Jet, Return of the Jedi got five nominations, only won one. And then Phantom Menace, Clones, Sith, and Force Awakens all got zero wins and barely any nominations. I think they got some raspberries in there. They did. Yeah. So, I mean, just looking at pure numbers here, the seven films of Star Wars were nominated for 27 Academy Awards. They only won seven. That's not great. Whereas Lord of the Rings, they won, I'm doing math in my head right now, six, 17, 17 awards. Including Best Picture. Including Best Picture. Which is bonkers. If the listener is still awake, and by the way, Brandon, <laughs> we, have, we have one listener. Yeah, we always talk about the listener. That we, the yeah. listener is out there somewhere. We yes. will find you. I think that just means Lord of the Rings takes it, right? It has to. With, I mean, yeah, Best Picture Joel's, winner alone. the homework that he just gave us. Yeah, I gave you a lot of boring homework there, but the point is that Lord of the Rings has won more awards, Academy Awards, than Star Wars. So by default, that should win. But if you guys have other arguments, I'm happy to hear them. No, I, I, I think that makes that, sense. That yeah, seems factual. Just, yeah, yeah, it's factual. Let's just go on. All right. All right, next category. Hear that? Joel is fact. So and just, <laughs> just so you guys are updated, this means Star Wars has one and Lord of the Rings has three. It, this will change. Yeah. yeah. Uh, no, I'm sure it will. I'm sure it will. Yeah. Well, don't give the running tally. Otherwise, it's not going to be a mystery at the end. We don't? Okay. All right. Yeah. No more running tally. All right. Next one category is backstory. Which movie gives the best backstory? Kent, I can see you're wanting to say something. This is really tough because there are, I think, about 1,322 expanded universe novels, <laughs> right? And they're prequels yes. and everything like that. But I think it's just Neighbors of George Lucas that he basically, he gave carte blanche to to write books. Not really canon, especially now. Like, literally not they canon. They basically took Wikipedia and all the... <laughs> good old Wikipedia. Good old Wikipedia. We refer to w- Wikipedia a lot. We do. Um, but Wikipedia, like, they basically had to say all this backstory is no longer canon. It's called Legacy, I think they call it mm-hmm. now. Because they just wiped it out with uh, Force Awakens. And it's yeah. kind of sad that the entire backstory is now like, yeah, it's an alternate but universe. But I also think you have to go off what, what George Lucas actually did in Star Wars and even in the, in the prequels. There's, there's not that much story there. It's just a family story. But people, it's amazing to me coming up to people or people that are big fans of Star Wars that you could point to someone in a cantina and say, what's that guy's name? And they know it. Yeah. And that I have his toy. amazing to me. Yeah, exactly. That's Hammerhead. But yeah. when... Yeah. Bib Fortuna. Bib Fortuna. <laughs> yeah. That's part of the action figures, yeah. too. That, yeah. He was, he was the guy in Jabba's Palace with the snake. Huh. Oh, yeah. I had him, tendrils. actually. Yeah, yeah. My dog chewed him up. That was, that was cool. Yeah. We gave my dog away after that. Took him to the ranch. What were you um, going with, Kent? It has to be Lord of the Rings. J.R.R. Tolkien, that, this was his life. He created so many novels outside of the end, the appendices of, of Return of the King, about everything that happened before. There is a universe that happened before, and some of the stories are even cooler than what happens in Lord of the Rings. And you just have to give it to Lord of the Rings. Do I? Yeah, you have to. <laughs> Do I? You, you, you must. Have to. And he did. And I did. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. It, it literally has, a more back, it has more backstory, has a better backstory, because it's a book first. And there's so much more uh, richness to that story of Lord of the Rings and the languages. Hobbit. I mean, yeah. And, then, yeah. and granted, you know, it's a lot of discussions about, you know, the different types of moss on trees and stuff like that. But there's a literal backstory where is Star Wars. Yeah, it was in George Lucas's head, but it's a screenplay first. Well, Star Wars backstory is like Obi-Wan telling Luke, hey, yeah, your, your father died. In your the Clone father Wars. died. <laughs> right. And I guess this is his lightsaber <laughs> after I cut off his arms and legs. Yeah. You know, <laughs> yeah, and exactly. Then, then George Lucas kind of messed it up. He messed up his own canon. He did. He started going to the prequels and just kind of saying, and uh, these droids don't remember them because reasons. But Brandon, will you prove us wrong? I will not. <laughs> Good. <laughs> there we go. And, and here's the reason, because because Lord of the Rings. OK, so, so there's the backstory that actually exists and the backstory that feels implied. Right. Right. And, and, and the backstory that actually exists for Lord of the Rings is the Cimmerillion, mm-hmm. which is a Bible of a universe that doesn't exist. When you read the Cimmerillion, you know about uh, more about another world than you do about Earth. And explain what the Cimmerillion is for people that don't, uh, yeah, that the, haven't read. The, the Cimmerillion is like the Bible of, of, it's like the scriptures of where all the Middle Earth people came from. And, and where it's it all, written by Tolkien. And it's written by Tolkien. And I mean, it is, it is a 
book of backstory. That is what it is. It reads like an encyclopedia of a world that never was. It's not a novel. It is an encyclopedia of a world that does not exist. And you've read this book. I've read a lot of it. A lot of it. It's yeah. it's it's tough to read it all. It takes it takes power. It's my nightly reading is the Sumerian and the Necronomicon. It's just I mean, is that something you go to like, you as a writer that you go back and you're like, let's see how Tolkien did this. It's beautiful that he created a Bible for his world and shared it with everybody, or, or mm. that at least it got shared with everybody. Well, like, and it keeps things consistent too, because you look at George Lucas and he's just like, yeah. yeah, let's make let's say that Leia remembers her mom and then let's have her mom die in childbirth. Right. Spoiler alert for Attack of the Clones. I don't think that's necessary. Here. It's <laughs> no spoiler alerts for this show. When you watch Lord of the Rings, yes. you can feel that backstory present. Like, mm-hmm. like you, you feel it with these ancient demons that are coming out of places. Right. And some of the words Gandalf says, a keeper yeah. of the flame of Arnor, or whatever. Like, like yeah. it seems like that's something, and that has a history, and it, and it kind of does. Yes. You know what I mean? Like, and so I can feel that backstory. Did you, did actually, you, did you see Fantastic Beasts yet? Yes. Because that was actually my issue with Fantastic Beasts, is Harry Potter had that kind of backstory. You could feel the book, and you could feel these references. Fantastic Beasts felt a little more empty to me because they say things that I'm like, I don't, I don't know where that's going. But I understand what you mean by Lord of the Rings, that when they say things, you're like, that has a history. I, I, I kind of need to change my vote here because I just yeah. thought of a point in the prequels that came up that I think changed the game. Midichlorians. <laughs> 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 Making the Force. Yeah. Midichlorians. Let's make I the Force biological. That is yeah. a great backstory. Yeah. I'm not sure what it means, but it, it sounds great. What's cool <laughs> about Star Wars is that it is spiritual sci-fi. And let's yeah. take out the spiritual. Yeah, yeah sure. Yeah. Yeah. Let's yeah. make it medical and political. Yeah. Clinical in a way that doesn't seem like it would work. Yeah. Uh, that one went to Lord of the Rings. And next up is another Cold Hard Facts box office take. I, I separated them kind of by Lord of the Rings, Hobbit, and Star Wars. Okay. So Lord of the Rings, almost $3 billion. $2.9 billion for the three movies. Hobbit, two point nine. Three. It's like okay, I'll get into it. Two point nine billion for the Hobbit, six point seven billion for Star Wars. Here's the, here's the thing that blew my mind though. If I, if I may just kind of throw this out there, hmm. out of those three, Lord of the Rings, Hobbit, and Star Wars, how much av- like on average per movie do you think made the most? Like which movie made the most money per movie? Wait, per movie? What do you mean? Like which single? Like movie? if you took that lump and divided among the three three Lord of the Rings, the three Hobbit, Hobbit, or the I think it's seven Hobbit. Star Wars. You think it's Hobbit? Yeah, the newest one. Yeah, because it's most recent. I, I think people just went and saw it because they needed that to Force be part of the made more than You would everything. be correct. Seriously? Mm-hmm. Honestly? Like, okay, so Star Wars, an average of 70, or $759 million. Hobbit, or excuse me, Lord of the Rings, $971 million per movie. Hobbit, $979 million per movie. I had no idea the Power Hobbit was that momentum. successful. Yeah. yeah. Crazy. That's really what it is. Uh, so the, the highest grossing Lord of the Rings was Return of the King with $1.1 billion. The lowest grossing was Fellowship. Uh, Hobbit, Unexpected Journey, most with one point one billion, and Battle of the Five Armies was nine hundred fifty six million. Star Wars, the highest grossing was Force Awakens with two billion. Lowest grossing was actually Return of the Jedi with four hundred and eighteen million. So, all right. So, how does this? How does but this that said, up? adjusted, you can almost double that. You could, but I mean, just cold hard, what they made. Star Wars beats because it has more movies. I mean, it's six billion, six point seven billion compared to. I almost the, don't think you can count billion. Force Awakens, but you have to count the prequels and the original trilogy. So, let's hear both. Like, what is it with Force Awakens? What is it without Force Awakens? Well, that's math. Do math. I well, can actually give you the adjusted total. Right well, I mean, if it's six billion so minus get, two need, billion, then it's total. four billion without Force Awakens, which is still more than the three billion from Thor: The Rings and Hobbit. So it's Star Wars either way. Yeah, it's got to be Star Wars. It's got to right. be Star Wars. That's no surprise, I don't think. It's just weird that we're throwing out billion like it's nothing. Well, this one made three billion. <laughs> that's all. Well, that's yeah. it? I've got that many muscles. <laughs> <laughs> you do? <laughs> all right, Brandon, let's start with you in this one. Okay. Which franchise has the best cinematography? Ooh. Ooh. I think that the best cinematography for me, uh, like I, I keep seeing these Lord of the Rings panoramas. I keep seeing... Like, they did such amazing establishing shots in Lord of the Rings. I remember, like, establishing shots of Minas Tirith or establishing sh- shots of Saruman's castle or Orthanc or whatever. Like, just these establishing shots that the, sh- the shot alone was, like, worth going to the movie because it was mm-hmm. so Even beautiful. Hobbiton. Like, so simple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. simple, right? but beautiful. And right, had yeah. so much atmosphere and so much... Mm, and then like uh, or like when they went to the Dwarven realm underground and, like, there was just a feel like it was yep. almost, like, sacred down there. Mm-hmm. And you're like... Why am I getting chills like a, a, at a dwarf cave? So that those kind of chills were all about what I was seeing on screen, all about cinematography. So I'm, I'm going to say Lord of the Rings. Good choice. Okay, do you want to go? Yeah, I'll go. Okay. 
So one of these movies has actually won an Oscar for cinematography, and that's Lord of the Rings. I mean, clearly. I mean, it, it deserves it. I think it won a few. Mm. Uh, the guy's name was uh, Andrew Lesney, and he died last year. So I, if we don't give this award <laughs> to Lord of the Rings, you can't, you can't I mean, pull the death card. I think no, we kind of have for to. Ghosts. You are asking for ghosts. You, you give it to Lord of the Rings? I have to give it to Lord of the Rings. I mean, basically, this made people want to move to New Zealand like like crazy. That's true. But that's more set design than cinematography. I mean, but just everything, the scope of what they put on screen. Okay. I'm going to disagree with both of okay. you. Okay. Yeah. And okay. it's because Lord of the Rings, I could tell you, there's two basic shots in Lord of the Rings. It's the zoom up to the face of Frodo as he gets a weird look on his face. <laughs> Master Gandalf! <laughs> Sam! You're my Sam. And then the other shot is the helicopter tracking shot of people walking. That's pretty Beautiful. much it. Beautiful. Beautiful. No, and, and it's fine. People love Lawrence Arabia for a reason because it's just as That's a low blow. No, it's not. Lord of the, it's, Lawrence Arabia is a very good, uh, very cinematography movie. Yeah. But th- those are the basic shots. It's the tracking shots of them walking and it's the close ups of the face. Star Wars, I mean, there's choreography involved in those space battles. You're flying around with them, they're going all over the place. They have these beautiful shots of these large cities, they have these very intimate moments between two characters. I would have to give it to You're Star Wars. You're talking about the prequels right now, right? Exclusively. Yes. Right. When, they, when they, I loved it when they changed the ending of the Ewok dance and went to every planet. To, <laughs> uh, Ewok dance. The Ewok song and showed us every planet. Because that made it better. Yub yub. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think action directing was, was great in Star Wars. Those space battles were incredible. But when it came to focusing on the people... Yeah, it's like in a small room. I'm it just felt saying, like TV filming. If a you're bit. if you're in a giant green screen room and you're still able to come up with a good shot and not get green blindness, then you're good. That's a better <laughs> shot, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that one's going to go Lord of the Rings. Let's, Fine. Uh, wow, this is really heavily swayed towards Lord of the Rings so far. Is it? I no, think so. We're not, we're not keeping tally. We, we can't kids. say. We can't say. Don't, yeah. don't yeah. Sh- erase that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Delete. Yeah. Kill that. Oblivion. In post. <laughs> All right. Next category is characters. Which had the better characters? Yeah. In fact, I'd like starting with Brandon. Let's let's do that again. You go Ooh, that. starting with me. Yeah, okay. Wow, this is tough. Okay, so maybe because here's the thing, all those darn action figures. Those action yeah. figures trained me and 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 Obi Wan Kenobi taught me how to pray. <laughs> I'm using that like, like he, he literally taught me how to pray because he was like reach out with your feelings Luke and I was like oh that's what we're doing that's, that's exactly what we're doing I hope your parents don't listen to the show yeah <laughs> no my parents tried but they, 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 there was but no was accent Obi-Wan. they were just no, no Obi-Wan and that's yeah. all yeah and they didn't make that shot that killer shot um, yeah. so because of those because of the awesome creature design in the cantina things like that right like because of seeing such a huge variety of Boba Fett and Han Solo and cool names and cool like even though i love lord of the rings star wars star wars i love lord of the rings so much i love the characters but son of a gun han solo like you know he 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 is like when i see anyone trying to be a cool cocky pilot rebel renegade i'm like he's trying to be han solo yeah and like like it just established so much for me as far as character that i I gotta say star wars even though i love lord of the rings okay you've angered a lot of people brandon all right joel and i'm gonna have to agree with him it's Star Wars. <laughs> because, I mean, think about it. Obi-Wan, Luke Skywalker, Darth Vader, and Han Solo are much more memorable than, say, Gimli or Pippin or Arwen or Eowyn or Irwin or any of those. I just feel like, I feel like you there are... You don't think are, they win? No. Huh? <laughs> so distinct. Yoda. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yoda. I mean, you people mock Yoda or even parody Yoda having never seen the movies because he's so iconic. And the same with Darth Vader. You see Darth Vader, that is a character. Ooh, and I got to say this. I'm yes. sorry. I'm, no, jump, I'm jumping in late. <laughs> no, it's okay. But like when I was two and a half years old, right. the first movie I saw in the movie theaters was Star Wars. And when Darth Vader came on screen, mm-hmm. I knew we were all going to die. And that <laughs> Wait, is like why we? We? <laughs> it is one of my very first memories. And it's because of Darth Vader Darth coming Vader, to kill you. Darth Vader was so iconic in that movie yeah. that, that I remember it from, from when I was two and a half. Yeah. You know, Although, he's just, he's just really moody and he's yeah. a youngling killer. I mean, there's not much to his well, backstory. Can I, can I ask there. you guys a question? And this is something I, I, this is not related to the topic at all. Well, to the verses at all, but regarding star Wars, I felt like I was done kind of a disservice because growing up, I watched uh, new hope empire return of the Jedi on rotation. I never really got scared of Darth Vader because I knew in the end he was going to he was going to be a good guy. So I was always like, well, he's bad now. He may have blown up an entire planet, but he's a good guy in the end. And so I didn't ever think of him as like that bad of a guy. And you forget how evil he really is. So that's why I'm trying to show my kids kind of just how evil he is before I get into. And then he's somewhat redeemed at the end. But Ken, did you right. have a vote, by the way? Uh, if, if I could. Yes. I think it's hard to deny 
that Sam, Frodo, Mary, Pippin, Gandalf, Gimli, Legolas, Boromir, Aragorn. I mean, everyone. Aragog? Er- Aragog. The, the spider <laughs> the from spider Harry Potter. From Potter yeah. <laughs> that the fellowship is not classic. I mean, they are amazing. But, but going with what you said, Joel, they're not household names. No. Among us. Yeah, we know them. We love them. In fact, the fact that they've been around so long in book form mm-hmm. has been like in the legacy is there. Yeah. That said, I think it's more the characters and the races that Tolkien created. Whoa. I know. Sorry, I went with, I went with the race card. It's racist. <laughs> the, the races that Tolkien what do you created have against Bothans? <laughs> are greater than the maybe singular characters. Although having Samwise, Gamgee, and Gollum in your, in your movie, I mean, that's really all you need. But you can't beat Darth Vader. Darth yeah. Vader is the sole reason I'm choosing Star Wars. Unless you're Wars. the Emperor, then you can beat Darth Vader. <sighs> right. Yeah. yeah. Or if I'm you're Darth Vader yourself. Yeah. Or something. Yeah. I mean, James Earl Jones. No, and this is where I don't say the prequels count because the prequels do ruin the characterization for me quite a bit. Other than everyone on Jar Jar? Yeah. Other, well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, because there's, there's so many and then it just, it kind of ruins them anyways. Right. But you can't beat Han Solo, but Darth Vader is the sole reason that it wins. Is there any other character where you're like, I know how he breathes? Yeah. Not really. No, no. I can't think of anybody. I'm trying but, to think of But Darth character. Vader, I, I imitate his breathing. Maybe, uh, uh, what's his face from Sandlot with the asthma. But. Oh, there you go. <laughs> yeah, yeah he's <laughs> asthma. Mikey and Goonies. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah guys, exactly. Do you guys think it's safe to say that Lord of the Rings is the only, or Star Wars is the only thing that could probably beat Lord of the Rings? In this category? Because, in the characters? Yeah, in characters. Well, because, I'm just trying to think of iconic characters. Well, we, we had a Harry Potter show last week. Harry Potter. And Harry Potter would be really and, close. I, I think the yeah. true yeah. test. Just based on it, it's right on the Harry tip Potter of everyone's mind. Yeah. And I do think the true test is if you can talk to someone who's never seen the movies and say a name and they know who you're talking about and their personality. Like if I, yeah. if I went to someone and said Yoda, they'd probably go, oh, I'm Yoda. And I'm like, that's a oh, terrible impersonation. Yeah. 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 So yeah. But if, you, if you said, you're such an Amidala. <laughs> You're such an That's low, man. I know, That's right? Low. Stop being such a bit for tuna, Kent. I just died of heartbreak. Yo, All right, next category. What, uh, what's the little guy on Jabba's lap again? Skrillex? No, no, no. The little guy on Jabba's lap, the little yeah, the, laughing oh, guy. Oh, the rat the guy. Who laughs, yeah. Scrumunchious yeah. Uh, oh, Funk uh, or something uh, like that. Uh, salacious Crumb. There salacious Crumb. Yeah. Scrumunchious <laughs> Funk, I think, is what it was. I only <laughs> know that because Joel says it so often, honestly. <laughs> All right. Uh, Kent, let's go with you. Which franchise has the best costumes? <laughs> costumes. <laughs> a costumes for me sounds just as funny as attractiveness of the cast. <laughs> it's supposed but, to be. Okay. No, this one's no, more it's, real. This is an Academy Award. This is this. much less Costume embarrassing design. than attractiveness of the cast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're right. <laughs> this one for me, it has to be Lord of the Rings. Really? Because the, you, are you saying this because you dressed as a hobbit to, at the uh, <laughs> Harry Potter Kent premiere? Kent would never dress as a hobbit. No, he went to the Harry Potter book opening dressed as a hobbit. We talked about that last show. Not only did I dress as a hobbit, I tried to get everything right, even the elven cloak, which has the little leaf that has the three leaves. Yeah. And that's actually, I'm going to, the elven cloak is going to be my sole example, is because there was a book series which people held so dear to, and they had to get everything right. And the attention to detail that they put into these characters is perfect, mm. literally perfect. And this is with all the different races. This is Oryx, Urukai, all the main characters, the elven races. Everyone has a different type of costume. And it's sadly, I, I know it was 1977, 1980, all that kind of stuff. It wasn't clothes that you found in your garage that you made different alien races out of. But, oh, okay. So yes, it's Lord of the Rings for me. May I go? I mean, the behind the scenes things, I, like they really went crazy on Lord of the Rings. Oh, like, yeah. The detail and well, like, they the little signature. But attention and, to detail. Yeah. But here's yeah, here's, here's why I'm going to disagree with Kent. You think Star Wars Surprise. is a better costume? I think Star Wars is a better costume. How? Because I'll say this, because medieval clothing is medieval clothing. You throw a cloak on someone and they don't know if you're from Lord of the Rings or not. Honestly, you put the Strider outfit on anyone and they'll be like, is he from Lord of the Rings? Is he from Game of Thrones? Like Jon Snow, Strider basically the same costume some video game yeah and Boris, wouldn't that just say Jon Snow was borrowing from Strider though I mean it could be but I mean that's more copying it's that's medieval not clothing saying. it's cloaks it's robes it's it's very generic for fantasy but with Star Wars you, I don't know you dress like an elf Star Wars okay two words golden bikini <laughs> you can't know we're not giving we're not giving a win to star wars for t- for the golden bikini for no, two okay. categories i'll go back to what brandon said earlier darth vader darth no, vader probably Dar- for three categories the darth vader costume is so iconic and honestly jedi robes have a look to them they are not okay. medieval they're jedi it's robes. iconic too about the chest Storm down troopers. i mean the chest up because the costume is kind of weird looking it's weird looking but it's iconic it's much better and don't you think it's a little based off sauron well no and I'm, I'm not saying movies. You realize Star Wars, yeah. You realize Lord of the Rings came out, what, 40 years before? But you realize there was no pictures until... Just complete descriptions. Yeah. Right? 
I, I do. I, I mean, granted, it's a type. It's the. But did the Dark Lord have a breathing apparatus? Like, yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, Sauron was scary, and Vader was scary. Yeah, yeah. he had an eye infection instead of the saying, yeah. And I'm saying, yeah, yeah. once again, this is more kind of just the iconic nature of them. But if you see someone a cosplay, a Star Wars cosplay, much easier to recognize than Lord of the Rings cosplay. But it's so simple. Han Solo has a, a vest cloak. on. A cloak. A, the vest with the long sleeves. For some reason, that's Han Solo. All right, I think we're going to go to Brandon for, for okay, an answer. Okay, tiebreaker is the answer is Star Wars. Oh, yeah! yeah. And, and, and the reason is Star Wars, I'm going to add to Joel. Golden Bikini. Is, no, no, it's, <laughs> no, this, it's Boba Fett. It's Stormtroopers. It's like variety of weird, cool crap. Yeah. Like, like droids. And it is like, I lump, I can't help lumping things like Cantina scene into yeah. it. Right. Like where, yeah, but people got like old vacuum parts and just made weird aliens. But, they but made it them. looked cool. Yeah. It looked, it did. It looked like I went to the Cantina and I was like, that's cool and weird. And I remember as a kid, like seeing Hammerhead in the Cantina, yeah. I knew nothing about him, but I wanted that action figure. Cause that thing looked like nothing I'd ever seen before. Exactly. That's how they get you. And so like, like I, I am with Joel on the medieval is medieval. I hear but the like, argument of it was meticulously, brilliantly, like the Uruk-hai, perfectly done. All the makeup that was done to those no. people. It was brilliantly, it was br- what was done in Lord of the Rings was brilliantly Uruk-hai, and, Uruk-hai, and Uruk-hai, virtually Uruk-hai, perfectly done. And I love Lord of the Rings. I, in my heart and mind, I see more variety and originality in Star Wars in the costumes. Yeah. Even just Princess Leia when she had that weird thing on and she went to rescue Han. It was a weird, cool looking. Right. Yeah. yeah. Weird just little trash can. So thing. different. Yeah. It's got to go to Star Wars. Ah, come on. Well, and one other thing, Ken, and I don't want to, I don't want to hurt your feelings. Star Wars already won. I know, but I don't want to hurt your feelings on this. Ken doesn't have feelings. But the droids are costumes as well. C-3PO is a costume. Ooh. R2-D2 is a costume. Yeah, that's true. So what? <laughs> IG-88 is a costume. costume. Kids, if it makes you feel better, I thought you had an easy win on this one. Right. And they've just made really good points. Wait, like, if it makes me feel better, that makes me feel worse. <laughs> I should have had we this one in the back. Together. Welcome we to were wrong together. That's what it means. <laughs> All right. That's What's what it up means. next? All right. Next up is another kind of uh, just a data point. Critical response. Now, what, what, the what did think? you use for this? Because I know you hate Rotten Tomatoes. What's Rotten Tomatoes? He had to God, use Rotten every Tomatoes time. every time. No, last episode he was a fan of Rotten Tomatoes. Remember you oh, guys, that's were, right. you guys loved were perfectly it aligned. Fantastic yeah. Beasts. Just right. because I like Fantastic Beasts, okay? I'm kind of mainstream. I don't know. With this one, I went with spe- specific critics who are at the top of their game. Okay. So like, like Ebert, for example. Like Lord of the Rings, he said, thumbs up, right? David Germain from the AP he said, masterfully paced, movie built slowly, introducing mythology, habitats, and lifestyles to Tolkien's creatures. Mm, critics. We have another one that says the Fellowship of the Ring is an unqualified triumph. More, please. And then I go to Star Wars, which actually has about the same level of praise. So this is why this one's tough. And I think it's more subjective than yeah, it is. Yeah, you go to sing every, because both, all critics will probably like both. Because right? like, but then there's like Pauline Kael, who was very opinionated back in the day. She wrote for New Yorker and she basically said, yeah, this is like a circus as it's an assemblage of spare parts, but has no emotional grip. Like she was very pretentious, but that was kind of her thing. I don't yeah. know what that was her metaphor one? was. That was Pauline Kael. This was Star Wars. That was Star yeah. Wars, right? But then Ebert yeah. says the, uh, Star Wars taps the pulp fantasies buried in our memories. It, like it really grabs you. It grabs the child inside you. Right. And so it, he really liked it. So this one's tough. Probably Lord of the Rings, just because when it came out, it was received so well. And Star Wars was new that people couldn't quite accept it. All right, Joel, what does your research say? <sighs> well, I'm, I'm bugged at this category because this made me math and I hate mathing. <laughs> But uh, just to give you uh, kind of the quick synopsis of it, the highest rated Lord of the Rings on Rotten Tomatoes was Two Towers with 96% uh, critical and then 95% from the audience. Return of the King was actually the lowest rated, but it had 95% critical and then 86% audience. So it's still very high with an average of 93% overall. Um, was there a mean or a median? Well, yeah, just exactly. Right. <laughs> the average critical was 94% for the Lord of the Rings series. The audience, the average audience is 92, so a total of 93%. But, uh, and then The Hobbit, the highest rated was Desolation of Smog with 74 critical, 85% audience. The lowest rated is Battle of the Fire Mommies with 59% critical and 75% audience. Okay, so what's your, what's your final tally there? That's, that's a that's lot of Hobbit, numbers. So that's still in there. I'm, well, and the, the point being is that, I'll just go with the totals here. Lord of the Rings, average of 93%. A Hobbit 74 is going to bring it down a little bit, but Star Wars is an average of 80% on their, across their movies. So just barely is what Empire you're being rated, rated the highest, Phantom being rated the lowest, 80% for What did Phantom Menace get? If I, I don't Phantom Menace got a, a critical 55%, audience gave it 60%. Okay. And uh, the highest one is Empire with 94% and 97%. So wait, so Lord of the Rings take it? Lord of the Rings takes it with 93%. Based on that false algorithm that <laughs> Rotten Tomatoes runs? <laughs> Stop bashing on Rotten Tomatoes. This is audience, too. Eh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Canto, he's a critic, so he associates with other critics. He doesn't care about. The I pick a favorite and I go with it. Yeah, yeah. All right. 
Brandon, any feedback on that one? I'm, I'm not going to feedback that. I'm going to let you guys have that one. Because, <laughs> yeah, Lord of the Rings Lord of the Rings has done better critically on Rotten Tomatoes is what the bottom line is. Yeah. All right. Hey, the math people, my brother, the accountant, is loving that part because I talked averages. Yep. <laughs> you should have said hypotenuse just yeah, once. Exactly. Hypotenuse, math, uh, Pythagorean. <laughs> He's right. He, you heard him. <laughs> he said those words. There's no arguing word, yeah. with that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Which franchise has the best dialogue slash writing? Okay. Dialogue writing, it's got to go to Lord of the Rings. Maybe it's just the acting, but Star Wars dialogue is bad. <laughs> like that whole monologue about how sand is terrible from Anakin. I mean, that, that's a prequel too, but then you get these kind of just awkward conversations. Like George Lucas, he, he, he's a good story creator. He is not a good dialogue writer, and he's not that good of a director. But he didn't write the original trilogy. He wrote no. the prequels. Right. He gave it to other people. He told the story, and he's a great storyteller. Which is why the prequels, or why, why the original series is better. Because yes. he, it's like M. Night Shyamalan. When he's running everything, he burns out. But, but what about I Love You? I know. <laughs> that, that is, is great. great it's a great writing. line. Nobody, yeah, nobody wrote that, though. That, that was the improv line. Was yeah. it improv? Yeah. yeah, it was. Oh, What's that? improv for the win. That was high, pre- high five to Harrison Ford. Yes, yeah, seriously. Yeah. And it's, it's great. It is one of those great moments that everyone knows. Ah, I love it. So, yeah, Star Wars, terrible dialogue. It's, I got to give it to Lord of the Rings because you think about, I mean, just the conversations with Gollum and himself. So well written. All right. Peter Jackson, Philippa Boyens, Fran Walsh, all three of them, like, taking years. The nanny? Yes. <laughs> no, <laughs> taking years to research these novels and in the universe to come together to brainstorm and write this series. It was amazing. And it's Lord of the Rings. Okay. Brennan? It is rare that like a wizard sounds as smart and right. as wise as a wizard should sound. Yeah. yeah. And Gandalf did. And like it, it is a, uh, it is, there are moments in the dialogue in Lord of the Rings where the dialogue alone, the intelligence of the dialogue when they're scared, they're going to die. And Gandalf tells them about a far green country that they can go to. And like, mm. there's just some magic in the words sometimes. And so, yeah, I, I got to say Lord of the Rings as well. So yeah. Took clean sweep. sweep. Clean sweep. That's our first one, isn't it? Yeah, it might be. I don't know. I mean, except for the factual things. Aren't, aren't you keeping track, Jacob? That could be. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not keeping track. All three, that might yes. be. Yeah. 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 Uh, okay. Next one is family friendliness. So Thank I you. assume this is the category that Joel wants. Yes. And, and I assume this is the category that Kent means family friendliness is the bad Thing, no, right? no, not at all. <laughs> oh, and that's not it. That's not it. Yeah. Oh, I thought this was like a negative category. I was going to say I'll start off with this one just because this is this is one of my categories that I had to put in there. It's got to be Star Wars. I mean, Star Wars is one I can throw on to my kids and we can watch almost the entire series without any issues. Is it because Luke and Leia kiss? Is that why? Yes, Star it's Wars. Very, gets it's very this family one? friendly. <laughs> 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 no, but then if I put on Lord of the Rings right now to my kids, I mean, Shelob would terrify them. Right. And uh, the uh, pool. What is that? Pool of the Dead. What is that one? With the, with the bodies in the water. That? That? Yes. yes, that yeah. is terrifying. And there is there are real stakes in Lord of the Rings, and scary things happen, and people die. Catapulted heads. Yes. Yes. Yeah, that's and true. it's terrifying. Star Wars, I mean, I'll, I'll just say this. I watched it on my mission. Like, we got, we got permission to watch shame, episode shame. one in theaters on my mission, which dates when I was in my mission. But that was the president mission said, yeah, this is okay to go watch. I don't know if you've done that with Lord of the Rings. Maybe, because there are a lot of token analogies, but... I got to give it to Star Wars because you can watch that with your entire family. It's a series that we watched as kids. I mean, the fact that there are Ewoks and we liked them once upon a time. I still do. Do you? Yup, yup. <laughs> Does that mean yes and Ewok? Yup, yup. <laughs> but the thing is, Luke is on the hero's journey. He is every kid. Well, that's something to really see, except for like Frodo, on the other hand, is on a hero's journey, but he falters, clearly. Yes. No one really wants to relate with Spoiler that. Spoiler alert for Lord of the Rings. Right. <laughs> yeah. And so it has to be Star Wars. And uh, I'm with you on Star Wars on that one, too. A nice yeah. clean sweep. Yeah, and I don't have too much to add. That's, um, that's solid. Solid reasoning. All right. All right. Let's go with humor for next category. Brandon? Humor. Oh, humor. Humor. Well, you know, they, 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 did, the, they did the fireworks, and they did... What's funniest of those two? Gimli movies? is kind of a funny character. Yeah, Gimli, Gimli and Legolas good. playing off each other. Yeah, yeah. There's that. Throw me. Yeah, no, that's pretty good. That neither of them are like these hilarious movies, right? They, and there's there's R two and C three PO. The Balrog that, is hilarious. That are, yeah, R two and C three PO are, are good comic, right? Like like there's 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 good character humor there, right? But. But I don't know. I think I think I laugh more in Lord of the Rings. I'm going to say Lord of the Rings. That's kind of close, though. Isn't it's it? very close yeah. for me. And I think neither one is a hilarious movie. No. 
I mean, Sam's a little bit. Did he, did he forget about second bref- breakfast? And, yeah. and do you go to where you can make fun of stuff, though? Like, you know, right. like, like, like which right. is easier to make fun of? And, where's, yeah. and there's lots of humor there, too. And mm-hmm. they both are rife with that. Maybe Star Wars. Well, there's has, Spaceballs. Star Wars I mean, has more to tease. Star Wars right. has more to tease. Yeah, yeah, it does. But I mean, what about Levensies? Potatoes. You we know, say second I mean, breakfast is a joke. Exactly. Like, yeah, our family. Everything yeah. Pippin says is a joke, and it, it's pretty funny. It, it is Everything kind of like R2-D2 say. and C-3PO. It is more character humor, that, but it's levity, I guess. Right. And those ends. Hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> but even like the Helm's These Deep. These are not funny movies. The trees. <laughs> You're not supposed to have that many toes. <laughs> <laughs> but like the Helm's Deep competition, when they're taking out soldiers and they're, they're taking out. That part's count. awesome. Yep. Like it's awesome, and you just go, you, you, it's, just, it's smirk-worthy. None yeah. of it's hilarious, not even in Star Wars, except for Han Solo's kind of funny. But right. it's Lord of the Rings. Your worship. I was going to disagree. I, I think that humor wise, there is there's slivers of humor in Lord of the Rings, but it's mostly straightforward action fantasy. Whereas Star Wars, it's corny, but the humor is there. Like, like what? Well, and I thought of bad examples. And so I know that, but, like, but you know, Star, uh, excuse me, uh, C3PO and, and uh, R2D2 have a great kind of relationship with each other. Uh, never tell me the odds, things like that with R2D2 just annoying, or excuse me, C3PO just annoying Han Solo and everyone around him. I enjoyed that. But then you get the terrible things in uh, in the prequels when he gets, <laughs> like you you have to groan before even saying the prequels. It's because like those lines when he when when C three PO says things like "Oh, I'm beside myself," when oh. he's broken. Yeah, and that that a lot of humor. Th- oh, thanks for voting for Lord of the Rings, Joel. No, I, appreciate I, it. I voted for Star Wars because <laughs> right? at least they were trying for more humor. I think overall but there is more let humor. the Wookiee win. Let the Wookiee win. Let the Wookiee win's good. Yeah. Um, I mean, there's just stuff like that. I think they try more for humor in Star Wars, so I was going to give it to Star Wars, but it looks like Lord of the Wings is going to take this. Ca- Lord of the Rings is going to take this category. I mean, if effort were the thing, were the bar here, then Star Wars tries harder. Yes, right? they yes. try. Much they try harder. to be funnier. Yeah, but, but they yeah, just they just don't. And I do concur that probably Lord of the Rings wins or succeeds more. But I yeah. mean, having Mary and Pippin in your group almost certifies certifies a win. But they were the comic relief. Right, just like C-3PO and R2-D2. Right, but I mean, Han Solo gets a couple things off. Uh, Leia calling him a scruffy nerve herder, things like that. Get walking carpet, like things like that. Is that funny for everyone else, though, or just kind of... Made me laugh. All right. It's more like trivia. Also two words, golden bikini. <laughs> <laughs> you would. Hilarious. <laughs> Family friendly, Joel. Yeah. All right. And Salacious Crumb was hilarious. Remember when he did that movie about him being a stand-up comic? <laughs> we did a pitch show about Star Wars movies, and Salacious Crumb got his own movie. Yeah. That, that was oh, pretty wow. great. Yeah. yeah. That was pretty Joel's great. fault. Yeah. All right. This next category, you have to listen to these words carefully. Which franchise had the least missed opportunities? Least missed opportunities. That's correct. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and is that a good thing to have the yes. least? Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah, yeah. it's the least missed. Okay. Yeah. There, there's probably a better way to say it, honestly. I'm well, just not sure here, what it is. Here's what I'm kind of struggling with this one because which missed the least opportunities. I, I put for Lord of the Rings. I just put um, like nerd gripes is one because you could say like Tom Babadil not putting him in the movies, for example. Mm. That's a nerd gripe or not not enough of a certain character or maybe too much of a, another character. And so I just kind of put that in one because that's it's the nitpicks. If you could go to nitpicks, you're going to say like 492. But I just made that one, and then also people. I think a missed opportunity was maybe ending Return of the King faster than it actually ended. And I don't know if that actually qualifies as well. Mm -hmm. So what are you giving it to? I don't know. Like Star Wars, the original trilogy, if they had cool sword fighting, but that that is redeemed also in the, uh, in the prequel trilogy. Mm -hmm. Like it's the great thing that the prequels do. This, this shows the highlights of the prequels. Yeah. Um, also I think a missed opportunity is like a story cohesion like there's an unexplained balance of the force i still don't know who balances the force or how it balances yeah and that's is another it, show it, altogether is it truly balanced when there's no sith well they can never address that and they try to make the once they made the force logical then right. they kind of have to address that yeah yeah and, and if they left it a little illogical they would have been okay but i think yeah. lord of the rings takes this for me and i just decided this because chewy never got a medal at the end of a new hope and that is a missed <laughs> opportunity so it's lord of the rings <laughs> lord of the rings yes had the uh, least missed opportunities yes. there too. See, yeah. and I'm going I'm to disagree with you, Ken. Oh, oh, okay. Because I feel like uh, Lord of the Rings had and and The Hobbit. I'm going to include both of these here. They both had books, and so they had more opportunities to miss to put something That's on true. screen. So when people got after it, it's because they oh they should have done it this way because this is how I thought about it, and they should have done this way because this is how I would have done. This it. wasn't too many movies. This was least missed opportunities. No, but that's <laughs> what I'm saying. Is like there's a lot more opportunity for them to miss things because there was a story they were going off. Where Star Wars, there's no backstory, no thing that people are following. You give the, Lucas gave us something that's like this is what we get. But are the prequels just knowing the pre- prequels exist and they're terrible stories? Isn't that a missed opportunity? That's three, three two hour missed opportunities right there. 
but the I mean, the, 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 fact that people, the fact that people stopped liking Star Wars for 20 years because of those prequels. But like they grew. I mean, they're only now popular. As your twenty one really yes. year old friend, no. I don't know. Some people like the prequels. <sighs> so I'm going to give it to. I'm going to give this one to Star Wars' least missed opportunities, and Brandon's going to. All right, yeah, time. we're going to Brandon. Okay, so there was something I really wish happened in Star Wars in the prequels that didn't happen. And this, this quality, is, high quality. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Emily. This is so. This this is very. This is incredibly biased, incredibly personal. But when 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 Anakin was fighting Dooku. Yeah. In the start oh, of that mm-hmm. one, yeah. right? I started the Attack of the Third Clones. Ones. Oh, that, it was, yeah, you're right. Yeah, I so desperately, desperately wanted that to be the start of the Force Choke. Oh. It, if he had won that fight on a Force Choke. Good call. I would have been in geek heaven, geek nirvana. Yeah. yeah. And, 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 and we never got to see like Force Choke. It didn't become part of the issue that much. And We like, did get to see a beheading with the double lightsaber. There was awesome stuff. But like the finger pinch Force Choke, if that, if that, that felt, had taken down Dooku, I would have wet myself. That felt, <laughs> <laughs> the double, double lightsaber beheading felt out of character for me. Force Choke would have been a great teaser for what's to come. I, I would have loved it. And if like, if no one had never seen that before and right. they didn't know how to defend it. And then maybe like in the last fight, like, you know, the force or something, Obi-Wan found a way to kind of like, like shake it off. Like right? He puts his hand in front of his throat. Like yeah, yeah, to block yeah. the finger. Yeah. The like finger three poke. stooges <laughs> yeah. type force ah. stuff. And, and we've got to say that when, in a new hope, when Obi-Wan and Vader actually fight, that's a missed opportunity. Yes. It needed to happen. And Obi-Wan people. plotted that. Yeah. But still, they just hit swords a few times, and that's it. I mean, they're that was their time, especially after seeing the cool fight in, in Revenge of the Sith. But they were older. That's fine. They're still Jedi. But Can, what, which one did Brandon Look at Saruman this? and Gandalf. I mean, they fought, and that yeah, was cool. Yeah, their stunt doubles did great. <laughs> my call. other side of this, my other side of this is as I look at Lord of the Rings, I thought, when I went into Fellowship of the Ring, I thought, this is the unmakeable movie of all time. Right. There is no way they're going to put this on screen. I cherished those books. I worshipped those books. Those books are why I write fantasy novels, right? Yeah. And and I walked out going, that was possibly the best movie I've ever seen. And so, like, the fact that they, that they took something that was so hard to put on screen and put it on screen with... For me, so many missed opportunities, so much they could have screwed up, so much they could have ruined, right. and they didn't. Like like things like the way it looked when he put the ring on, and, and things like the, the feel of the ring wraiths, and things that I loved in my imagination that sometimes they even got better than my imagination. I'll say least opportunities, Lord of the Rings. Least missed opportunities. So Lord of the Rings takes that one. All right. Brandon, can I ask you a personal question? Yeah. Out of the three, Lord of the Ring, out of the three Lord of the Rings movies, Fellowship, Two Towers, and Return of the King, which is your favorite? My favorite is Fellowship of the Ring. Oh, my favorite ending in the series is the ending of the two towers. Yep. That's a good one. Yep. Ken, what about you? Two towers, two towers all the way. I'm a two towers guy, extended edition myself. Yes. Uh, what about star Wars? If you had to pick one star Wars, we've talked about this before, but Brandon star Wars, the empire strikes back is, is my favorite. And that's Kent's too. Whereas I'm a return of the Jedi guy. Yeah. I, I love the climactic finale stuff. of Father versus Son and that swelling. It's John very cool. Music. Everything coming together at the end is yeah. awesome. It was awesome. Yeah. It, it, it showed how you end a trilogy with with the way those oh, yeah. the way that was edited and yeah. stuff is amazing. Anyway, sidetrack. But I just when you right. said that it was well, your look. I mean, it's movie. not like we're not geeking out on the show, so I mean, yeah, we might exactly. as well throw it in there. I don't know. <laughs> All right. All right. Next category is going to be legacy. Which franchise has the best legacy? Star Wars started in the seventies and it's still going today. Lord of the Rings is already dying off. What? I think that its legacy is lessened. Return of the King happened in 2003, was it? Was that, was that when it came out, Kent? Lord of the Rings, 2001, 2002, 2003. Yeah. And they had The Hobbit, which tried to recapture the magic, but it didn't quite work. And I, that's all they have. Star Wars can keep making movies. They can keep going. Disney. Cha-ching. Look, Cha-ching. I'm going to moderator jump in here and say, Lord of the Rings started way sooner than Star Wars. Yeah. I mean, because I mean, we're not, we're not just talking about the movies here, right? It's hey, true. Hey, Brandon, how many sci-fi space adventures have you written? <laughs> um, Don't pick on yeah, Brandon. None. <laughs> none. How many fantasy type novels A have lot. you written? Interesting. Yeah. Just wondering. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it just feels like that the legacy of Star Wars is much more wide-reaching than Lord of the Rings. I'm not saying I'm not saying I don't like Lord of the Rings. I'm not saying it's a bad it, like that. Those movies are great. Like they're great. But the, they're not going to make any more. Books, Lord of the Rings, or movies, Lord of the Rings? Look, this is legacy we're talking about This here. is just all around legacy? This is everything. This, this I mean, is legacy. Legacy is its impact on the world. Because then you made, my, you made my decision easier, because I originally went with Star Wars, because I was just going off the movies. Because Star Wars made sci-fi fun. Yes, Star Trek came earlier. They were, like, lost in space. Many, many space adventures. This made it fun. This was an action movie. Legacy is, yeah, it's kind of gone on. 
Um, it, it's kind of defined blockbusters and not just, you know, space Westerns or whatever, but the Lord of the Rings books is what really wins it. And so it has to be Lord of the Rings. All right, Brandon. I mean, look, I mean, the fact that he created orcs, the fact that you like Warcraft, everything you like from Warcraft time out, is based- time out, time out. Don't say I like Warcraft without context. <laughs> What? Because I don't like the movies. I don't like World of Warcraft. I like you Warcraft, Warcraft 2. 2. No, he just likes going to war. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, like Warcraft like, 2 and Starcraft. I mean, everything we know of, of these fantasy races, and, and you know, with some additions clearly, are based off Tolkien's work. Brandon, you got to break the tie. Okay, that's tough. But this is tough. As you, as you say leg, legacy entire, that does, that, that you, as you include the books, that gets really tough because the, the Lord of the Rings established, created, and for so long, for years and years and years, dominated the fantasy genre and mm-hmm. market so much that if a fantasy writer wrote elves, they wrote Tolkien's elves. And if a fantasy writer wrote dwarves, they wrote Tolkien's dwarves. Mm-hmm. Like if, if people write elves yeah. and dwarves or orcs, or they still write Tolkien's versions of those things. And so that is so deeply imprinted. If it had just been movies, I, right. I, I, I would be with you because I would say that the Lord of the Rings movies were extraordinary. The Hobbit movies weren't. It's done. I think the deeper, deeper, long, longer lasting footprint right. Star Wars. Overall legacy, including the books, it's Lord of the Rings. It, 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 it had a deeper, longer. Frodo lives was on subways in the sixties, and, and, and like it, it is, it's a deeper, longer impact on that whole literary. Genre. Faster, harder, better, stronger. <laughs> yeah, it's Daft Punk. Daft Punk. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. So we, you guys make some good points. I won't concede, but I'll, I'll allow. <laughs> You'll give the win. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Without a fight. <laughs> Glad you're going to accept. All right. Next category is merchandising. Clean sweep. Star Wars. Star, Star Wars. Wars. Yep. We're just going to go there. <laughs> I mean, yeah, the, the toys. Like, yeah. I mean, Millennium George, Falcon. They like, invented merchandising. Didn't George basically. Lucas give rights away yes. uh, of story? Yeah. He, he basically said. Because he wanted merchandising. I'll, I'll take, uh, you know, I won't take as much up front. I'll take some of the merchandising. Like, and I think he took all of the merchandising. I think he took it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I yeah. think he took it. And that's why he's a billionaire. Here's the funny thing, Crazy. too. I, I just, I, I learned this fact and I was like, that is amazing. And I didn't know this. But when uh, Star Wars first came out, they made some toys. They had no idea the impact it was going to have. So they were gone so quickly. And by the time Christmas rolled around, the toy manufacturers did not have anything. So they sold an empty box. They sold an early mail-in kit, basically. It was, it, was this, it was this box with placeholders where you could put your figures, and then you would mail in. The parents would buy it and give that Christmas morning. And there was a coupon where you could mail it in, and you'd get your figures around January or February. Which, until wow. is coming in February. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and that's awful. Can you imagine opening that box and being excited? Yeah. And that's, what the, that's, that's what, nuts. The, the video I watched is these guys like, I remember getting the box and then being like, there's nothing in here. But, I mean, merchandising, it's got to go to Star Wars. Oh, yeah. And people will pay money. To have the toy never played with. Yeah. That kind of thing. Like, I mean, it just, like, yeah. yeah. I mean, and Lord of the Rings merchandise, I mean, I love their breakfast cereal, but honestly. <laughs> Wait, what? Yeah, it's like, it's like a catalog where you can buy the swords. Golemos. You know? Yeah. <laughs> Golemos? Yeah. <laughs> Does that exist? It's, I don't know. Okay, it's, awesome. it's, it's, it's a bunch of golden rings. Like, wait a minute. Oh, it's a bunch of golden knows. rings. Yeah, I want that. And it has like the front of the box is one face, the back of the box is another face. Eric this is a missed opportunity that you're discussing. What about Eric checks? <laughs> <laughs> the golden bikinis. No, once again. <laughs> once again. Yeah. Just like banana shaped cereals like that. What? <laughs> <laughs> let's let's move on. Like bikini shape, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> this is right. getting weird. This is why Jacob's the moderator, Brandon. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, musical score. Oh. Can, uh, can you just put some of the score in the background during this part? I, I well, know that's a good idea. Oh, I, well, it, yeah. it will. It will. Yeah. It's, it's too, this is too tough. You don't want to make the audience weep by yeah. putting the score in the I background. own every Lord of the Rings soundtrack. Howard Shore does an amazing job. He does. But we talked about this a few weeks ago. You can't dispute the themes in Star Wars. And you have to give it to Star Wars. Even though the complete set, Lord of the Rings is better. But for the themes alone, Star Brandon. Wars. There's a problem, yeah. The themes in Star Wars are so, right. so, I, like, like I, I, for musical hooks, probably the most iconic musical hooks I can think of are da 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 and Like I hear that, yeah. I feel I yeah. feel shivers of recognition, and, dun, and I, dun, I think everyone dun, when you, when you, dun, Imperial dun, March, yeah, yeah it's like, just tough. When you hear yeah. those, you react. Like when when, I, when just when you were doing that, the Jedi, dun, 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 it was all I could do to resist to like reach out my hand and try to turn movie things. <laughs> I, I would sit, I would sit with my friend at work, 
And he would like he. I would whistle that. I would hold out my hand, and he would blow so that the paper would slide across the table. <laughs> wow. and, we, and we could do that for so long and be so. I amused. used to because it used felt to, real because wow. you were whistling the right thing. Well, and I used to at red lights. I would sit there and just hold up my hand and sing the song until it turned green with someone else in the car and be like, "See, I got the force." <laughs> oh my gosh. It's a matter of seconds. That's all you got to sing it for a little bit. Yep. Uh, so, yeah, it's, it's, it's Star Wars, Brandon, Star Wars. Yeah, I mean, it's so tough because right. Lord of the Rings has great music, but Star Wars is greater. Lord of the, yes. Yeah, Lord of the Rings is great, like study music, epic music. But when it mm-hmm. comes to songs you know, songs you love, and I mean, Duel of the Fates, the main theme, Leia's theme, Imperial March, you know the names. Lord of the Rings, they have some good, good music. And some, but it's not, it's not iconic. You're it's not, not humming it worldwide, all yeah. those different, yeah. Although I will say... Um, uh, oh, what is that one? <laughs> no, that's, yeah, I can't think of the name of it, but the one from the, the Balrog one. Uh, what, what's the, the Mines of Mora and the Bridge of Casa Doom? Bridge of Casa Doom. Yep, fantastic for Halloween. Play that one around Halloween time. Mm. It's great music. <laughs> all right. Well, another clean sweep. Uh, all right, this was kind of big. Are you guys ready for this? Which original film is better? A New Hope, Fellowship of the Ring. Yeah, this is hard. Go, Joel. <laughs> this is hard because, I mean, like Brandon said, uh, okay, can I confess well, something? Well, it's tough, though, because we are of a certain age, and Brandon, you said you saw Star Wars when you were three? Yep. Right? Almost three. I didn't see Star Wars in the theater. I just watched it repeatedly as a kid. Right. I saw Lord of the Rings in the theater, not the first one, because that right. was in my dark ages. <laughs> um, but I ended up seeing them in the theater, and that's a much different experience. So was this that when one you was... were goth? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Stage crew. Yeah. Uh, no, but here's the thing is, so, okay, Lord of the Rings, and I'm going to confess this. I did not read the books previous to seeing the movie. I, I that's really, okay. That's okay. That shouldn't be necessary. No, no, but I, is, I. As I walked out of that going, wow, I want to read the books. Like I had no concept of it and I was worried it was going to be kind of too, well, geeky, frankly. And, you know, be like, ah, oh, from the, from the shores of Galafrium, we've come with the crystals of Humberdinger. Yeah. Um, Unrelatable fantasy gibberish. It's a great artifact Thank right you. there. Yes, it is. But I walked out of there going, this was a really good movie, and I can't wait to see the other ones. Even with the ending that leaves you hanging. It does. I know you don't care for movies that don't stand on their own. True. And uh, to it's quote, a Brandon ending, actually, though, in Lord of the Gangent Rings, uh, wrote a great thing where we're doing the, the parody, and all of a sudden, it's, the narrator comes on and is like, and the scene, and the show ended mid-sentence from Frodo, or something like that. It's, nice. It's yeah, just, perfect. That's exactly what it felt like. But man, I got to give it to Star Wars. It it changed blockbusters. It changed merchandising. People walked out of that seeing things they had never seen before. Whoa, whoa, whoa! whoa. I don't. We're not. We shouldn't be talking about impact, though. No, but I, that's what I'm saying. Original film quality, like, like just the film itself, right? But that's what I'm saying. Is Star Wars did so much and showed people things they'd never seen before, which is what cinema should do. Okay, I got to give it to Star Wars because I feel like that uh, the A New Hope really just inspires and amazes, and it can stand on its own. Fellowship is fantastic and quality film, but it can't. I'm glad you chose that because I disagree. <laughs> that seems to be the theme of Bacon Sale. Like, I think A New Hope is the weakest of the Star Wars movies. The weakest. It's a really simple story. It's a hero's journey. There's a cool space battle at the end. I, I'm simplifying it clearly, but it's, it's just okay, right? All right. Fellowship made fantasy movies relevant. It had been tried and failed numerous times before. And just like Brandon said, Fellowship... Just knocked it out of the park. No one expected anything from this movie. And the risk that Peter Jackson took by filming all of these movies at once and then releasing the first one after it was done. That is risky. Was amazing. And the fact that Fellowship just did so well and is many people's favorite one of the series Mm -hmm. says a lot. Empire Strikes Back is a better movie because they're like, oh my gosh, we could make this thing great. Not just an adventure movie. We could make this deeper. So it's got to be Fellowship. All right, Brandon. Back to you. And this is super hard. I will agree it's super hard. When I went in, when I walked in to Fellowship of the Ring, my favorite movie of all time, hmm. at that age at that time, probably was, probably was the first Star Wars. I don't think I distinguished it enough yet to, to pick Empire Strikes Back as my favorite. So I just thought of Star Wars. I thought of the first Star Wars. Star Wars was my favorite movie of all time, and I love movies. And I walked out. Of and Star was, Wars or of No, no, I walked out of Fellowship of the Ring. Okay, were you walking would, when you went to see Star Wars? Because you were three. So. Yeah, no, no, no. When I walked <laughs> sure. out of Fellowship yeah. of the Ring, I was in stroller. college. Yeah. I, I was in college when I saw Fellowship of the Ring with some friends, and I walked out of there carrying a corpse of Star Wars riddled with arrows. Whoa. And, and I was like, oh my God. 
I think, I think there's a new sheriff in town. Wow. Shots fired. And, <laughs> Literally. Oh man. And, and I was like, I was like, I think that's the best movie I've ever seen. And so because of that feeling of, of loving Star Wars so much and walking out of fellowship going, I didn't think it was possible to make a fantasy movie this good. I didn't think it was humanly wow. possible. And, and, and the fact that I said, I think this is the best movie I've ever seen. That feeling I've got to go with Fellowship. But this is tough because, you know, like I said, I demeaned it a little bit by calling it a simple story, but it's a great standalone movie. It is. It's amazing. Like, Star Wars is amazing. It ends right. with the Death Star blowing up. It, it, but are we, de- were, were we demeaning it because we watched it so much when we were younger? Like, it was kind of like, No, you know, because it wins other categories for me for that reason. And, and for me, it was, like, you don't understand, like, it was... There's no demeaning it because it was my it was my pinnacle. Right. Like I walked in there going, that is my favorite movie ever. Right. And then walked out going, I think I have a new favorite movie. Wow. Wow. Yeah. I did not see that coming. Yeah. Sorry about that. No, it's okay. That, that, that's just hey. All, I, all my I, I got an answer I, from my heart. Yeah. He, he, he directs get, everything yeah, direct, at me. He gets all my anger. <laughs> right. Or Jacob sometimes. I can't be made to Jacob, otherwise my wife gets after me. <laughs> no, that's weird. Isn't it? <laughs> all right. Uh, okay. Next category is originality. What franchise brought the most originality? Lord of the Rings. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> How could I not? How Star could Wars. I not? It's Star Wars. Well, it is Hero's Journey. That's very normal. No, but, but like going back to the characters, well going back to the story, going back to the special effects. I mean, fantasy's good. Fantasy's great. But honestly, it kind of all muddles together sometimes. Star Wars, you don't forget. It's, it's iconic as what it is. Orig- I mean, there. look... Star Wars is based off the Princess of Mars, John Carter of Mars, which was terrible. It's hardly the most original Did story in fact, movie. It's yeah. probably like the seventieth version of that story, and of yet that exact it story. Cinema. It changed cinema, but we're talking about originality here, not impact. Originality. Originality. The Come fact, on. Tolkien, and you say fantasy. We all know fantasy. Tolkien essentially created fantasy. Well, he it's original a lot too, but. But, but Lucas made sci-fi mainstream. It, it was no longer the B movie fifty with originality sci-fi. though. It was no. The, he took familiar concepts that we all know that we all love. That's why the movies Kent, do so well. That's why. Kent, that's why the Force Awakens Kent, killed it because search inside your heart. It is the least original thing. <laughs> Kent, search inside but, your heart and tell me that a lightsaber. But it rang true for when us. I say the word lightsaber, you don't think to yourself, "Oh man, I no, look, uh, who doesn't love lightsabers?" Right? But they are swords. They're lightsabers. They're swords they that are knights use. Focused crystals. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now you're getting a midichlorian t- territory. No, no, no. That's that's how they create them is with focused crystals. I think Brandon's really stressing out right now. I know Brandon's <laughs> holding his head in his hands right now because he knows so the tiebreaker. You have is to coming. make this tiebreaker. Yeah. yeah. I'm deliberating, and is, is the moment. Uh, it's time. The moment yeah. is Can right. I make yeah. arguments? Okay. Um, it's Star Wars, and it's Star Wars because wow. yes, <laughs> wow. It, it's Star Wars because the. Bib Fortuna. It has an absolutely unique <laughs> look. It has an absolutely unique look and feel that, I, that I've never seen anybody quite generate s- before or since of a, mm. of, of, a, of a unique, like, Middle Earth looks like stuff I've seen. It's awesome. It looks like stuff I've seen. Star Wars, Death Stars, X-Wing Fighters, there's stuff in there that I just had never dared to dream or envision, and, it's, and it all, I don't know, it just, to me, it feels super crazy freaking original. And the fact that there's a Millennium Falcon oh, kind of helps win that come as on. well. You don't pick apart his argument, no, you pick apart I, mine? he's kind of won me over. <laughs> and, 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 and almost, and almost like, like you, you, you say lightsaber. Yes. You know what I mean? No. And like, and like, like, we've had swords all over the place. There's no lightsaber. Like, people are shy to put a lightsaber-like weapon into a movie because yes. they know it looks like they're ripping off a lightsaber because it was that stinking original, you know? There you go. Just That's tough. Star I mean, uh, that sounds good to me. Oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> I swear, I say one thing and he's like, no. And then Brandon says the exact same thing. He's like, good point, Brandon. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we're best friends. We established That's this, right? right? He did yeah. At the beginning. Yeah, four and one, Joel. Next category is pinnacle status. Now, now, Brandon, well, there was a little bit of confusion on this one. Which way do you want to go? Yeah. What, what, what do you prefer? Either way is fine with me. I, I can prepare either, either argument. So do you want to go with your original idea or do you want to go with... Okay. So, so my original idea was, okay, like in some ways, Lord of the Rings is the great. It is the pinnacle fantasy movie. And in some ways, Star Wars is the pinnacle, the great sci-fi movie, which is more the pinnacle as a movie for its respective category. That, that, that was what I was trying to, I was pondering it and trying to figure it out. So I thought, hey, let's throw it out here. Yeah, we can do that. I, I, is Star Wars a mightier pinnacle to sci-fi or is Lord of the Rings a mightier pinnacle to fantasy as the movie, as the movie? That's a really good question. I, I thought about, about answering this question. Be, yeah. Because like there's Lord of the Rings, which yes, is the pinnacle of fantasy, but then there's Harry Potter, which is very well known, mm, right? Right. Um, and then there's Star Wars, 
But then there's the Star Trek argument, which many people can make. Yes, and we're gonna we're actually gonna get a wow. lot. Of, we're gonna get a lot of heat for a this lot is of what tough. we said. This is this is an audible right right Can, now. Ken and I actually have a very big blind spot when it comes to Star Trek, and we always get list, the listeners saying, "How come you don't talk about Star Trek?" It's because we really haven't watched that much of it. And, and really I feel like to. we're going to get a lot of flack for this, for not including when we're talking about, yeah, no, no one's ever done this before. Like ah, in episode 29 of the original series. I don't know why I'm making that. <laughs> we're right. talking about Lord of the Rings versus Star Wars and I'm making nerd voices for Star yeah. Trek people. <laughs> <laughs> this is what we sound like. So though. demeaning. Uh, okay. I'll okay. answer. Go for it. Until two years ago, when Disney announced it was buying Star Wars and everyone got excited again, no one cared. Star what? Wars was once the pinnacle. But no one cared. In fact, Star Trek came along in 2009 and kind of took that for a while. It made... You're saying Lord of the Rings. I'm saying Lord of the Rings again. I mean, I have to. Yeah. Okay. Well, Kent, let me tell you something. Three words. Game of Thrones. Oh, good call. Very good call. I think that, I think that fantasy, once again, fantasy is... That Lord of the Rings is fantastic fantasy. But even right now, Game Are of Thrones... Are you calling Game of Thrones season. better yeah, is that than what Lord you're of the Rings? Right now, Joel? This seems very I think you out of character. That. Would nope. you say that? Not at all. Because you love, you love Game of Thrones. I do love you Game of Thrones. You want to marry Game of Thrones. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. That'd be a very... Friendly, friendly. That'd be a very <laughs> harsh Khaleesi, marriage. Khaleesi. Just Khaleesi. Yeah, yeah Khaleesi. But honestly, I, I think that, that's, that uh, Star Wars did for sci-fi, like it put it in the mainstream. It was the pinnacle of sci-fi. It was accessible sci-fi. Because I think Star Trek, not as accessible to non-sci-fi uh, geeks. Yeah. And I think it was, Lo- Star Trek was more niche. Yeah. And I think Lord of the Rings, you still had to be kind of a fantasy fan to even go see it in the first place. It's a good argument. So I'm going to say uh, Star Wars. Pinnacle. Okay. And so Lord of the Rings did help mainstream fantasy. It did help mainstream. But Harry Potter also helped mainstream mm-hmm. fantasy. And, and I, think, I think Star Wars bore a heavier load for longer and stood at it as a pinnacle for so dang long. Share the load. That, that I might say Star Wars. I'm going to say okay. Star Wars. Okay. Yeah. That, Star that's Wars a pretty good it. case, yeah. yeah. That was a hard one. Jeez, Jake. It is a hard one. Okay. Actually, that's your fault, Brandon. So yeah, thanks. It's, yeah, it's not me. Yeah. All right. Next one. Rewatchability. Brandon, what? we want to start us off on this one since you have this so much. This is a tough one, too. My Have me start? Yeah. You want I'll, to I'll start. Rewatchability? Yeah. So rewatchability, I would say rewatchability goes to Star Wars. Only because um, it is... It is beautiful to rewatch Lord of the Rings, but it feels a little more like an ordeal. It feels a little more like you got to gear up for it. You got to bring your equipment. You got to like you got to be ready for the long haul because you know that this is a big punch in the face. This is twelve hours of three movies, <laughs> extended editions, extended editions, yeah. and you're going for it and you're doing it. And when you do it, it's a beautiful experience. It's like I'm, running a marathon. I, I think I might love the house. The, ex- the house smells a little bit afterwards. Yeah, it, yeah it's true. Yeah. It gets yeah. Mus- yeah. musky. And, and so, like, it, it's a beautiful. I might like the experience of the rewatch better with Lord of the Rings, but more rewatchable, more times. Definitely Star Wars. Right. I, I know Joel's choice. I mean, this is pretty clear. Maybe Wait. I don't. He's giving me the eyes. I don't know. No, no. For me, I watch. I've seen Star Wars more because it was around since I was a kid. Mm. I watch Lord of the Rings, the the original trilogy, more because I watch it every do November. You own, do you own the Hobbit trilogy too? I yes, extended. Have you watched that since you watched it? I watch each one again, but I'd never watch them together because I don't. I'm like, yeah, okay, that's right. fine. But actually, this weekend, I think I'm going to watch 12 hours of Lord of the Rings. I do every year. Happy Thanksgiving. And I never set time to watch Star Wars. But if I'm sitting there and maybe Star Wars is on cable or like Empire Strikes Back, I'm going to watch the whole thing. So and you and Lord for, of the Rings. honestly, I can't do that for two hours. This is Ken's version of Speedy. Star Wars. Star Wars. Star Wars, because what? like any movie could, any of the Star Hot Wars. Twist. No, no, any of the Star Wars could be on, and I'll watch it. Lord of the Rings, I do have to make time for. You have it to has to up. be an event. You have to gear up. Also, yeah. and, and I'll say Star Wars as well, because Star, Lord of the Rings, you do have to watch chronologically. You do have to watch that kind of in order. And Star Wars, you can watch each one independently of itself, and it's its own separate story. You know how much I appreciate that when it's like, there's an arc. It's done. Um, and Brandon, your books actually do a good job of this, too, where you can read each one individually, and then they build on each other. But there is like something is resolved. I want you to feel like story. you read a complete story when you read any yeah. one of my books. And Perfect. so, yeah. And that, and that thing is when it, when it kind of leaves you hanging, like, cause the whole point of, of Lord of the Rings is Frodo taking the ring back to Mordor. If I want to get very simplified here. Sure. Yeah. Um, and that doesn't happen until the end, as opposed to star Wars, where it's like you destroy a death star and then you destroy another death star. I get so sick of waiting for him to get that ring <laughs> over there. I'm like, oh, just please. take an Eagle. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right. Anyway, rewatchability goes, goes to star Wars. Star Wars. Yeah. <laughs> Sequel quality. And this is where we are including The Hobbit. That we're including prequels and sequels this and is, spinoffs. Yeah. This is basically saying prequel quality. Yeah, prequel to the original series. Yes. There is an edge here for Empire Strikes Back because it's such a superior movie over the first one. Mm-hmm. And then kind of a downgrade for Return of the Jedi. 
But the thing is, Lord of the Rings, their both sequels were amazing. Return of the King, maybe a little bit less or so. Actually, include, probably about the same. Including The Hobbit in here, too. Yep. Yeah, honestly. Hobbit's Hob- okay, you know what? I will just go with the prequels. Hobbit's a better series than the prequels. Okay. Uh, and that to, bar is low. <laughs> the bar is low. I haven't, can I say I haven't decided yet? Okay. And so I'm going to play Brandon because it's a toss up. I mean, Star Wars has Empire and Jedi, but it also has the prequels. Lord of the Rings has Two Towers, Return of the King, but the Hobbit series is pretty bland. It's like Jar Jar versus Smaug. However, well, like Smaug, which, come on. Smaug was good. Smaug was great. However, seeing as how the prequels are almost universally despised and the Hobbit is mostly forgettable, but not particularly harmful. Forgettable is better than bad. I, I'm going to say Lord of the Rings. Okay. And I'll just keep this quick. I'll, I'll say Lord of the Rings. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Yeah. I mean, we just basically tossed Empire and Jedi out the window. I know. It's so yeah. dirty. But it's just tough. It's close. It's yeah. tough. Yeah. yeah. You kind of have to go with the prequels in both instances because that's where the weakest spot is, right? Yeah. yeah. Sound effects. <laughs> Engage sound effects now. <laughs> Okay, now think of one Lord of the Rings sound effect. <laughs> Can do anyone it. do the TIE Fighter swoop? Like, a... Oh, there it is. That's pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and Lord of the Rings, you basically have... <sighs> no, that's parcel tongue. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Ladies talking to you in your dreams going right. Right. Ooh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's got it's go Star Wars. Yeah. It's Star yeah. Wars. Star Wars. <laughs> All right, that was a good one. All right, uh, special effects. So 1970s and 80s practical effects with some yeah. CG, with some mm-hmm. early CG. Very early. Against practical makeup and costumes versus CG environments. Yes. This is tough. And let me, we should probably clarify, for all you film geeks out there, we're going with visual effects, not just special effects. So all you film nerds out there, get that. Oh, this is tough because it's so easy to say Lord of the Rings. In fact, it feels wrong to say Lord of the Rings because they, the technology is there. Like, it's, it's just apparent, whereas they had to, they had to make... A- aliens out of animal parts, you know, in our animal parts, vacuum, yeah. vacuum what, parts. What, show, what movie are you watching? <laughs> I don't think Greedo was behind this different one. series. Yeah. It's Greedo. No, but uh, they, they had to craft their own aliens. This is so hard. Oh, man. I like how people are. Do you want are, time to think about it? They're, they're yeah, people. I need time. I need time. All right, let's go to Brandon. I think he's got something. Oh, you do, huh? Mm-hmm. Um, you are wrong. Um, <laughs> Joel? <laughs> so, so for, for effects. Special effects. Visual effects, special effects. I'm going to say Star Wars because of, because of the groundbreakingness, because of the what the, how did they, where did this come from? Like, like I'll say Star Wars because it was, it, it's kind of like in context. It's kind of the fact that I can look at it and go, that's still cool. And that was a long time ago. And good on them for making something so long ago. With, but it with seems like you're kind of patting and, it on the back though a little bit. Yeah. I mean, like, so like you're it, saying Lord of the Rings then, Ken? I don't know yet. It's true. Like, like, like I'm, it, it's tough. It's tough, but I'll say Star Wars. All right. <laughs> I wonder, I, I, I've decided, so I want to see what you want to say. No, no, here. I need to hear yours. All right, here we go. Ready? Lightsaber. <laughs> You're dropping Really? The I just dropped the mic. But like a light effect? <laughs> oh, man. Special <laughs> effects, just <laughs> the lightsaber alone. Do you know how complicated that was back in the day? They had to go in and draw frame by frame. And that just that alone. And then you think of all the space battles and everything that went on. Lord of the Rings is very grounded. And while the makeup is good and the costuming is good, Star Wars has a lot more to it. Star Wars. All right, just to be different, I have to say Lord of the Rings because Hipster. because of Gollum. Gollum was the first CG character that you the believed capture. that you believed was actually on screen. Yes, you saw Jar Jar before, which wasn't convincing. You saw Dobby <laughs> the House Elf, which wasn't convincing. You saw Dobby the House Elf before Lord of the Rings? Was, yeah, because, that was before? Yeah, because uh, Chamber of Secrets came out right before uh, Two Towers. And remember, he featured in Two Towers. was huh. only briefly seen in Dobby Fellowship. was in Two Towers? As a fun fact, <laughs> when James Cameron saw Gollum, he said, okay, I can make Avatar now. Yes. Oh. No, that character Thanks is... Thanks a lot, Gollum. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's... It's amazing. Everything Gollum does is one of the most believable characters there. So, yes, I, I lose this round, but I have to say for Gollum, it's Lord of the Rings. All right. And now it is time for our final category. Yeah. <gasps> the final round. What is it, Jacob? Ooh, storyline and plot. Now, so which? this is a big one. This is a really big one. So the whole franchise, think, think the, whole, the whole story, right? Like the biggest universe for both of these categories or both of these franchises. Jacob, can I, can I know one thing just kind of as a teaser? Let's hear it. Is it close? It's very close. Oh. Between, between Lord of the Rings and Star Wars, based on the tally. Because I haven't been keeping track. Look, I, count, I counted a few categories ago, and they were just one off from each other. Oh, man. Oh, but, like, so this yeah. could be a determining factor. I mean, I could find out. In fact, no, no, no. Don't, 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 I was don't find don't, out. Don't find we, out. We, we don't want to know. because We just want to be teased. We want to be teased. 
So it's, it was close. Can I go first? Please. Okay. So storyline and plot. I, I actually, like I said, George Lucas is amazing at creating a story. Like just the idea. Like I love the idea of and the whole, I mean, it seems so trite now, but the I am your father thing. It's, it's so cliche now, but at the time, you know, jaws dropped when that happened. And the whole thing of Leia being Luke's, uh, Leia being Luke's sister and things like that. Like these twists you didn't see coming. Like, seemed kind of shoehorned actually. Whatever, kid. Yeah. I'm geeking. Oh, oh, oh. But it was cool. La- Jaws, I'm, I'm Jaws did here. drop. Jaws right. did drop. But no, I'm saying that in the hero's journey, yes, it's a story it's done before, but it was done so well and so familiar. Like just the story of Luke becoming, reaching his full potential as a Jedi. That is great. But it is simple and it is a standard hero's journey. Lord of the Rings is so much more involved and so much more complex in the fact that, like you said, Frodo doesn't complete his journey. He doesn't make it. He fails. And yet he's still our hero. He's still our protagonist. He's flawed. I got to give it to Lord of the Rings. And what? that is so weird to me. This is crazy. Because, I mean, just the story alone, oh, it's, it's tough. It's tough. And Hobbit, too. Like, I love the cartoon, and I think it's a great little, I think it's a great story. The Most movie's... Greatest <laughs> adventure. <laughs> but I, I just, I think that Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit have the better story because they were books first. And I think the screenplay first thing simplified the story of Star Wars. And as much as I love it, I got to give it to Lord of the Rings. All right. Let's go to Brandon next. Yeah, please. Okay. So... For me, that wasn't easy. For me, the greatest hero story of all time is the story of Frodo. And the reason it is, it's because it's the little guy. It's the guy that wasn't even a warrior. Little, little right? guy. It, 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 is, it is a guy who is not only physically small. Those who are smallest among like, us. Like, like, like he, 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 has a, he, has a, he has a physical, almost like a dis- disablingly small in combat, right? Mm-hmm. And, like, and a peaceful man who wasn't trained in the arts of war, and he takes this thing of immense evil and with pure heart with, and with the power of friendship, he delivers it. Like, like because of, like, like Obi-Wan Kenobi taught me how to pray. Frodo <laughs> taught me how to be a hero. Taught me what heroism looks like in its purest form. And so for, for that, I, I go with Lord of the Rings. Oh, jeez. So okay, well, this makes it easier, clearly. But I mean, the hero's journey from start to finish of Luke, right? Right. He definitely progresses. You see him, his lightsaber is you a do. different color. Green. By return of the, he's, thank you. <laughs> by return of the Jedi. <laughs> he's, he's wearing, he the blue he's one wearing a City. black karate gi this time instead yes. of, you know, a little instead bit. of the white robes. Bit, yeah, the white robes. He's a Jedi, he's a Jedi knight now. And the fact he gets to the end and he doesn't just, you know, kill the bad guy. The bad guy decides, oh my gosh, there's something bigger than this, bigger than my goal the entire time. Right. I'm going to help my son who's dying. Like that it ending is a great moment. Is so good. It is a great moment. But I have to say this. <laughs> <laughs> Saw that coming. I can't carry it for you, but I can carry you. Samwise Gamgee coming through in the end when Frodo had failed when, the entire time. And the, and Another, I'm just at the very end. And the thing is about Sam is, I mean, and this is just my opinion. I felt like he was kind of this, you know, throwaway sidekick for the longest time. And the fact that he does that at the end, that he's able to carry Frodo and help him. It's a great moment because you're like, oh, this character finally is like, oh, well, basically he's pulling his weight, but he's pulling everyone else's weight, too. Mm -hmm. It's a great moment. It's oh. not easy. I, I could honestly. I could make a case for either side. It's a story Someone, where the little guy saves the world and then the even littler guy saves the world. Yeah. Exactly. You know what I mean? It's just beautiful. But honestly, like I, I, I say this to the listener. The, I, I could go either way on this. Like I was actually just debating it in my mind right now. And a, and a good argument could sway me either the, way. The it's only hard. thing that, that uh, hurts Star Wars for me is the second Death Star. The fact that we have to see another the Death Star or the destroyed. Third one? Oh, man. Let's not get into that. <laughs> but it's another Death Star. That's even more impenetrable. But doesn't that seem logical? It's like, hey, we made this weapon. It got blown up. It just feels, never... it feels like sequelitis. Well, I hate it, it, when, make it, when, villain, I hate it when villains in, in books or movies or TV or whatever, when they try something, it doesn't work. And then they never try it again because it's like, oh, that didn't work. And it's like, it could work the next time you do it. If you make some improvements. Make the exhaust fan. Yeah, put, 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 put a grate over the exhaust <laughs> fan. We were blowing up planets with this thing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Remember wow. Alderaan? They don't. I did not expect that. At the end. So Lord of the Rings takes Clean the storyline. So now, are, are you guys ready for this? Yes. So this, Jacob, you've taken everything we talked about. You counted up each round I just, with the winner. I just counted both <laughs> both franchises three times to make sure I just counted these X's correctly, right? How close is it? Can I say this? Is, this is how close it was. Before this round, 
It was 12 and 12. No! <laughs> wow. Oh, then we know what won? <laughs> then you know what won. <laughs> oh, no. Lord of the Rings oh, wins no. by one with that Woo. last oh, category. Oh, my gosh. No one will bow to you. <laughs> and, and, guys, I really think that was attributed to, was it the attractiveness of the cast or the costume? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a long time ago. There's, there's lots of little details that right. dissuade this, right? I, I'm a little sad, to be honest. I thought for sure Star Wars was going to take it based on my list. Because I can tell you right now, I am very Star Wars biased. Like most of my answers were Star Wars. I was voting Star Wars the entire time. No, you weren't. I know. <laughs> no, <he> wasn't. <laughs> like honestly, I knew Kent and going into Look, the show. You're gonna be I, sad either way, right? Yeah. I mean Well, yeah, because, but the thing is I knew Kent was gonna be Lord of the Rings going into it. I knew I was gonna be Star Wars going into it. Brandon was the wild card. And the fact that it was so close, I think it tests the fact to how good both these shows are. Exactly. Brady kind of went both both ways, honestly. I, I often yeah. did. Yeah, yeah. 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 I, I'm glad you improvised because the past two days when we started creating the show, I've been stressing making cases for both points. And I don't want this headache anymore. I'm so glad it's over. <laughs> you could be all up all night pacing the right. rest of your life. But I am <laughs> sad. I'm sad that my pony lost, but at the same time, it was a, a worthy opponent. And so I can I can accept the loss. Yay for Hot Fudge that was, so And Lord of the Rings does have ponies. It does. <laughs> Well, there we so go. Close. So Lord of the Rings has declared the ultimate winner of Lord of the Rings versus Star Wars. Yep. Lord of the Rings is the better franchise, according to Bacon. Brandon, we could not have done it without you. No, we really do appreciate Thank it. Thank you Brandon. for having me. That was a fun smackdown. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, and yeah, if you want to find me, oh, Brandon, where, where can people find you? Yeah, if you want to find me, um, BrandonMole.com has some basics about me and my books. You can search Brandon Mole on Facebook and go to my author page and kind of see a little more recent things or events. Um, you can track me down on Instagram. Um, using my name or at writer Brandon, you can track me down on Twitter. Those are my main places. Cool. If you want to find me, you can find me at 76 Joel on Twitter, or you can find me at Quick Wits. They perform every Saturday night at the Midville Performing Arts Center. For more details, go to the go to qwcomedy.com or go to the Quick Wits Facebook page. If you want to find me on Twitter and Instagram, find me at Kenny3DD. If you want to see my movie reviews, showtimeshowdown.com. And if you want to see me on TV, KJS Channel 14 every Friday morning, 8 30. And you can find all of us on Twitter at Bacon Sale or uh, me, Jacob, at Jacob A. Rogers on Twitter. So, yeah. so until next time, the Bacon Sale will be with you always. Hello, my name is Brandon Mole. I write books about fairies. <laughs> Obi Wan Kenobi taught me how to pray. Oh, Brandon's a celebrity. This is weird. Is that why you were taking those drugs before we came in? Everyone thought he was gay, and then he turned out to be a werewolf. If either of those movies was going to make a boy band, for sure, yeah. <laughs> Lord of the Rings. But I was going to Toshi Station to pick up some power converters. <laughs> Something about the Return of the Jedi just lingers. Two words. Golden bikini. Also two words. Golden bikini. Aha, I see. <laughs> mm, well. Really okay. dad jokes? Yeah. Is that what we're doing? I'm a dad. This made me math, and I hate mathing. <laughs> Hypotenuse, math, <laughs> Pythagorean. He's right. Least missed opportunities. That's correct. Finger pinch, force choke. That, if that, if that, that had that. taken down Dooku, I would have wet myself. And right. those ends. Hilarious. <laughs> no one will bow to you. Because I put Jacob in three just in case there's issues. Thanks a lot, Joel. Jake has issues. People like lasers? Because that made it better. Yub yub. I've got that many muscles. The golden bikinis. And I walked out of there carrying a corpse of Star Wars riddled with arrows. <laughs>